before live stream. Are we live streaming yet? Okay, let's see when it gets started here and we can get started. Or live stream. Are we live streaming okay. yet? Man, it starts like immediately. Okay. okay. Let's see when it gets started here and we can get started. I'll turn that down so people won't hear it and get upset. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're out there and you can hear me, I'm Robert Breaker and we're starting a live stream now. Hope you come on. Um, we've got a special guest today and I'm looking forward to this. So let me give me a second to get everything set up if I can. Um, where is what I'm looking for? Close that up. Close that up. All right. Yeah, do things with different. All right, so it's showing me. Um, now I've got to figure out how to show my special guests. So let me figure this all out. All right, so make this smaller. I am not the most technical savvy person in the world, but this is a lot easier. We're using Google Meet. And if you have some uh, things to put in the chat, help me. Uh, if you're in the chat, tell me if you can hear me. Let me know you can hear us. And uh, let me go ahead and see if I can do this here. Make it smaller. All right, we are streaming live. Okay, everybody, I've got a special guest today, and his name is Roy Bell. And um, let's see if we can bring Roy in. Um, on, on the actual live, it's just me. So how do I bring you on as well? Let's find out. Oh, we should have tried this before. Here we go. Um, Roy, why don't you, uh, okay. That's not right. Uh, is your camera on? Why don't you go ahead? Let's see if that works and unmute and introduce yourself and then we'll see about trying to get your picture up <laughs> as you're talking All right. can you hear me can everyone hear brother roy now how do i share his screen so people can see him um we need one of them young tech savvy people to uh give us uh old guys uh some tech support here real quick what what do we click to to bring in the other side of the screen. Yes, what do I do here to bring you on board? Oh, with, this is great when we did it the other day, just you and me, we can see each other, but we want the other people to see you also. Okay, you show up. Maybe this is how it works. When you talk, you show up. When I talk, I show up. So let's try that. Say something and let's see if that's what happened. Um, okay. Uh, my screen is just showing you and and me just down in the corner okay it's going back and forth oh maybe it's as simple as just clicking on yours okay let's see what i just did i used the thumbtack and it did something see i'm seeing you from time to time come up so I just want it to show both of us at the same time. <laughs> right. Don't you love this? This is crazy. Oh, you'll figure it out. I have faith in you, brother. All right. I pinned you and I pinned me on a thumbtack. Does that bring us both up? Right now, all I'm seeing is myself. And I'm unable to go back and forth. So let me see. You want me to call my son-in-law in? We, well, I don't know if he wants to be on film, but. No, I so, need he won't be on film, but he's uh, uh that he does computers. That's what that's his uh that's his profession. Every now and then you show up and then I show up. So it's it mm. must be voice activated. When you're talking, it shows on you. When I'm talking, it shows on me. I was hoping to have it side by side. Was the idea. So let me see here. Um, if we if we have to do it like this, we'll do it like this, and I'll be very silent so it shows you. But just for for me, talk. Uh, well, introduce yourself real quick, and then we'll go from there, and I'll see if it's working. All right. Uh, uh, my name is Roy Bell, and uh, uh, I'm just old jailbird from the Slammer. Um, I'm a missionary evangelist out of Bible Baptist Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I have have a YouTube channel, Old School Bible Baptist, and uh, uh, 
was blessed on a recent uh, preaching trip to uh, to get to meet Brother Breaker in person down there in, in Florida. And we had a really good, really good steak and burger and lunch. And we talked about uh, getting on and, and doing a, a live stream. Amen. Amen. So that's definitely showed you. Um, it's on auto. Okay. So it's going back and forth. Let's try tiled. See if that shows both of us at the same time. Maybe I figured it out. But there's a delay when I go over to uh, YouTube to watch. So I have to wait for that 10 second delay to see. Hopefully we got it figured out. We can both be on at the same time. But it when you were talking, it was on you. So we have a computer director behind the scenes here, I guess, running things. Let's see what happens next. Come on, come on. Otherwise, we'll just have to let it go back and forth with us. But uh, I saw Brother Roy on YouTube, and he's a King James Bible believer, just like me. And uh, let's see, you did a video about me, and then you got in touch yeah. with me and started asking about me. And uh, yeah, it's not, it's gonna, it's on auto, I guess. I've got to figure this out. But uh, you were traveling through preaching in churches, and you, um, you, you said you'd be coming through Pensacola. I said, man, for sure, stop with me. And we went out to eat, and man, that was that was a lot of fun. So, um, we'll tell tell everybody, I guess, go ahead and start while I'm trying to figure this thing out. Okay. Um, tell us your testimony. Tell us about the jail thing. And tell us like everything you told me when we talked, because Amen. great testimony. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you know, um, I had uh, had to deal with that at first is uh, in ministry. I didn't want it to be about me. Uh, I didn't want it to be about Roy Bell. I, I, I always wanted it to be about the Lord. Um, but some wise people would say, look, you have a kind of a crazy story and people are interested and the Lord wants to use that. And um, it's a. Uh, my my life's verse is Philippians 1 6 being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ and um, that's really the the story of my life um, I uh, I grew up in Las Vegas Nevada my dad was a casino executive who died when I was 10 years old um, as the old saying goes I, I then fell in with a rough crowd and uh, got hooked on dope and crime and you know, as far as as far as the Lord is concerned, I, I grew up in a, a household that was without Christ. I uh, never went to church a day in my life. Uh, the only thing that I knew about Christianity or the Bible was what I saw on TV. So I grew up thinking that Jesus and the Bible were like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, um, just just nonsense you tell children. Uh, so I considered myself an atheist, and of course I was a hardcore drug addict and uh, and a criminal and. By the time I got to around my 21st birthday, I was uh, on the run from the law, had uh, spent a bunch of time in reform school, was down uh, on the Rio Grande River in uh, South Texas uh, in an apartment down there with a bunch of outlaw bikers and Mexican drug dealers. Uh, we were down there. We were running guns and dope uh, across the Rio Grande River. And uh, I had come to a place in my life uh, where I was like, wow. That this is it. This this is this is what my life has come to, you know. And I can remember sitting on that apart and in, in that apartment uh, out on the porch by myself one night and kind of just looking at the sky and just like you know. So this is it, <laughs> you know. It, it man, it, just looking at the sky like I, I need help. I, I, what if there's somebody out there, or, you know? So then. Uh, um, Guys started talking about this was uh, this biker gang was uh, second generation of the peacemakers out of Toledo, Ohio, started right after World War II. And these guys uh, began talk about one of the OGs, one of the original gangsters, one of the one of the peacemakers from back in the day, Big Dave Brake. Big Dave's coming down, they said, and they started telling Big Dave stories. They're talking about Big Dave kicked in the bar door and went in there and whooped them all. And I mean, this they got this guy, Superman, Batman, James Bond and King Kong all rolled up together into one. And so uh, we're waiting and we're waiting. And then one day, Big Dave pulls up on an old Moto Guzzi 850 El Dorado out front and he comes upstairs. And I knew, I knew the moment that I saw him, Dave Brake, that whatever this man had is what I was looking for, had been looking for, and is what I wanted in life. 
and Big Dave Break came in. He sat he sat in that apartment full of full of Mexican drug dealers and outlaw bikers, and he sat down and. And the thing about Big Dave was Big Dave was now a biker for Jesus. Big Dave uh, was a was a man of God now. And he sat down there and he began to share with us the Lord Jesus Christ in that apartment. And uh, uh, and I can remember to this day the very verse, the very verse that that God used the sword of the spirit to cut through the darkness of my heart and and, and to bring the light into my heart. He said, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. And it was like the Lord just reached in and flipped a light switch and was like, bang, Jesus in the Bible. Gee, this is real. This is real. Jesus in the Bible. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Jesus, this is this. It, well, I tell you what, I, 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 I was wonderfully saved. I, man, I believed uh, and uh, uh, God began to work in my life. And I, from, from there, uh, I, uh, uh, a week later or so, it was a boy's home in Mississippi connected with the Lester Roloff boys homes. And there was a young, there was a young guy. I went to started going to a little Southern Baptist church there. And there was a boy from this little Southern Baptist church that had been sent to one of these Roloff boys homes. And the director of the boys home, his little boy fell through a frozen pond into the ice. And this boy, John Orcott ran out, dived in, saved the director's son, but slipped back into the ice and he died. And so they brought his body down to Mission, Texas, this little church in South Texas I just started going to. They brought him down there with four boys from the boys' home. And I saw them boys, and I saw what, and, and I was like, man, I want to be part of this. Uh, Brother Bob Wills, I went to after the service. I said, hey, can I go with y'all? And then he was, I still had hair out there. I did. Hey, Brother Bob Wills looked at me, and he's like, well, what are you saying, uh, Brother Roy? Uh, you want to be a missionary? I was like, yeah, that's it. I want to be a missionary. So make a long story short, I went with them, slept on Lester Roloff's living room floor that night. He got up. He fixed us breakfast. He come out. He took one look at me, and he said to Brother Wills, who is that? And Brother Wills said, well, that's Brother Roy. He's going to be a missionary. He goes, well, you're going to give him a haircut, ain't you? You don't look like one of our boys. <laughs> but so I went to the boys' home, and I was there for a while. Then I went into a little Bible college in town at Central Baptist Church. And from there, I went on to Hiles Anderson. And then some things happened. I got discouraged, and I got my eyes off the Lord. And I, like Jonah, I tried to quit on God. I, 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 tried to, I tried to take back my call to the ministry. I tried to take back salvation. I tried to take back everything. But it wasn't possible. But I, but I tried. And, uh, and I ran from God and I went back to Las Vegas and um, God had a big fish prepared for me, actually a few of them. And they were called state penitentiaries. Ended up spending 30 years of my life in state penitentiaries uh, because I ran from God and I didn't want to do what, what, what God wanted me to do. But uh, see, there's no, there's no running from God. I, I run into these people that don't understand eternal security all the time. And, and, and I try to tell them, listen, if anybody ever could have lost their salvation, it would have been me because I tried real hard. But listen, when you're his, you're his, you're in him, he's in you. Your spirit is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There's no getting out of that. Uh, you, hey, that good work which he started in you uh, will be done. And even if it's on the other side of the grave, it's going to be done. And you have been predestined to be conformed to the image of his dear son once you're in him. And there was no getting out of that. But 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 I gave God a good run, if you will. And uh, so, I don't know, 12 felony convictions, multiple armed robberies, two habitual criminal enhancements, and two felony prison breaks later. Uh, uh, I finally, I was 50 years old at High Desert State Prison, and God, God, God took the dope thing from me because that was my thing. I kept going back to the drugs, even as much as I loved God, I still had a love for 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 drugs in my flesh, and, and, and I kept letting it get the better of me. And a, a point came where. I just didn't, I don't know if I outgrew it uh, spiritually or physically or just got too old for it. I just knew that I knew that I knew that I didn't want it anymore. I didn't like it anymore. And that's and that's when God said, well, you know, okay, uh, now what's holding you back? 
from doing what I called you to do. So I, st I went at High Desert State Prison. I started going back to the chapel. And uh, I, I thought that the ministry was a ship that had sailed. Uh, I thought that, you know, I was a castaway, that I'd blown that and everything. But in that chapel at High Desert State Prison, God began to use me again. They began to call on me. And Brother Roy, would you open in prayer? Brother Roy, would you like to come up and say a few words or something? And long story short, I ended up spending the last my last 10 years in prison as the chaplain's assistant and the pastor uh, of the Christian church in uh, High Desert State Prison, Nevada's largest prison, a 4,000 man unit. I got to spend the last 10 years in prison um, having church. That was my job. It was such a big place. Every unit had its own chapel day. So for the last 10 years, that's what we did is we had chapel. And that was my job was to go in there and lend leadership to the Christian community at High Desert State Prison. And we had church service. We had a, a great chaplain out there, uh, Chaplain Julio Calderon, a true man of God, a King James Bible believer who gave us the autonomy to have a real church behind. I mean, we had a choir, we had a baptism tank, we had a beautiful church building. And so we, that, that was 10 years. And, and I never thought I was getting out. I had, I had a life sentence as a habitual criminal, but I was happy, brother breaker. I was happy. I mean, I, I was, I thought I'm, well, this is what my life, but I'm finally in the center of God's will and I'm doing what God called me to do. I did not feel like a prisoner. I felt like a missionary who just lived on the field. And then one day COVID hit. And I don't know if you would call it actually dispensationally a miracle because that would violate the laws of nature to be a, a, a true miracle. But I'll tell you what, the very unlikely thing happened and God let, God let me out of prison. And um, uh, when I was in prison, here I'll, I'll show a, I'll show a couple of my little exhibits. All right, all right. When I got to prison, I was diagnosed because of my intravenous uh, 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 drug use. Uh, I was diagnosed as having hepatitis C. And then a few years into it, they invented the pill. Okay, my I just popped up. I can see myself on, on the on the screen now. Uh, a few years into it, uh, they invented the pill to treat hepatitis C. And so I started filing saying, hey, I want this pill. I want my hepatitis C uh, uh, treated. And so after like three, uh, three blood tests, uh, my response to uh, all my, all my stuff came back. And uh, basically what it says is, said, you don't have it anymore. You had it but you're like the one in a million, your body cleared the virus. And I like to say, when God delivered me from my love for drugs, he also, he also healed me of the disease that I given myself with that. And so then as we, as we're, go, as we're going through the years, sitting on my prison bunk, uh, I'd never had a computer. I'd never even had a cell phone, but I had a little TV and I'm watching the TV and I'm seeing all this YouTube phenomenon and internet and, and, and all that come to life on my TV. And God said, Oh boy. I said, boy, that's that God can use that. I mean, just, just like radio or just like television. It's just the next, it's the next level of getting the gospel to people. And so God gave me a, God gave me a little vision in my mind to, uh, he said, man, when I get out, I'm going to start one of them YouTube channels and Lord put on my heart, old school Bible Baptist. And I sat there and I drew, <laughs> I drew this little picture right here that I don't know if you can see that. And you can see this. There's a Charlie Brown head, Brother Roy, uh, with which is like little diplomas. And his little, he even falls down. He's got his little bookshelf there behind him. And, it, and if you've ever, ever been to my YouTube channel, Old School Bible Baptist, you will see that God brought that. He manifested that into reality. And uh, it's been a year and a half. I have, uh, I have like, uh, uh, about a little over 2,000 subscribers now, and uh, it's just great. I've got about 115 videos, and we're old school Bible Baptists, and that's that's not a, and that's not a, a, a an accidental title because that's what we're uh, in this in this day and age where everybody's trying to bring in some new twist to fuss about this and fuss about that. We're trying to stick by the stuff. For 25 years, when I was in prison, 
Dr. Peter S. Ruckman was my pen pal, my friend, sent me every single book. I'm a reader. I read three to five books a week all those years I was in prison. He sent me every single book he ever ever wrote. And he and he wrote and he wrote to me. And I and I learned and I learned and, and I learned and, and 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 I learned I learned the stuff. And uh, uh, and I don't mean Dr. Ruckman stuff. I mean the Bible stuff. I learned I, I learned the the great doctrines of the Bible and the truths of the Bible and dispensationalism and rightly dividing and eternal security and 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 the, and the King James Bible is perfect. I learned the stuff. And uh, your old school Bible Baptist. That's what that's what I want to do is stick by the stuff. And that's in 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 opposition to all of the newfangled twists and 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 internet fad and and YouTube hoaxes and 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 all of the nonsense that that's out there today, man. We 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 need to circle the wagons as King James Bible the Bible believers, dispensational, rightly divided. Look, we agree. We agree. 99 point something percent on everything then let's 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 bring that thing in and let's let let's circle the wagons and in these last and evil days it, the la these last days of the church age uh it, we don't have time to be fussing and bickering about little semantic disagreements here and there man we need to get together and, we, and, and have some unity and stick stick by the stuff so did I go on long enough? Let me throw it back to you. <laughs> all right. Amen. Amen. Am I still here? Can you all hear me? <laughs> I hear you. I've been trying. I actually cut out of this. I was gone for like five minutes. How do I get back on there? So you kept going. So that's great. Um, I'm thinking, is it? Yeah, okay. It shows me now. So yeah. So brother um, Roy is a blessing. I don't know if you've noticed that yet. We had a great conversation and a great talk. Brother Roy knows his stuff. Brother Roy's got something like five degrees while you're in, in prison. Because I guess if you're in prison, you got nothing better to do than sit and yes, read sir. the Bible and study and do courses for long distance and Bible schools. But it's not the knowledge of man that's important. It's the knowledge of the Lord. Amen. That's right. And uh, he'll tell you that first thing. He is a King James 1611 authorized King James Bible believer. He's also an independent Baptist, which is what I am. I am an independent Baptist. Now, a lot of people, they don't know where independent Baptists came from. And uh, maybe, do you, do you know, Brother Roy, where the independent Baptists come from? If not, this would be a good story for everybody so we can know. Uh, yes, sir. So the, the the Southern Baptists, and then there was the Civil War, Northern Baptist, Southern Baptist. Northern Baptists became conservative Baptist, American Baptist, some other name. And then in the South, they kept Southern Baptist. But in the was around the 30s, Baylor University allowed teaching of evolution in their school. And when they did, a man named J. Frank Norris said, no. That's right. <laughs> no. And J. Frank Norris was a pretty amazing fella. He was in Dallas, Texas as a pastor for two weeks, and he was in Detroit, Michigan as a pastor for two weeks. And in those days, trains were fast, so you could go back and forth. And he pastored two churches in two different places. And um, when they began to teach evolution in their schools, the Southern Baptist schools, J. Frank Norris said, well, we're no longer Southern Baptist. We're independent. We're yeah. independent Baptist. And he helped start the independent Baptist movement. And the independent Baptist said, we don't want to compromise. We don't want to fall away into apostasy. We don't want the worldliness. And we want to stick with the book. And for many years, independent Baptists were the ones closest to the Bible, the denomination that was the closest to the Bible. And uh, for many years, they were the ones to go to for sound doctrine because doctrine matters. Amen. They were the ones to go to to get the book. Many of them were King James only, but not all of them. Unfortunately, uh, many yeah. have fallen away from King James only. If a guy says I'm King James only, then 99 percent of chance that he was an independent or is an independent Baptist because that's we're independent Baptists. Now, there, there's some out there that are King James only that aren't independent Baptists. But the independent Baptists for many years were the ones that tarried by the stuff and kept with the book. And um, then you had, oh, I guess back 10 years or so, they started what they called the new independent fundamental Baptist, the N NIFB. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were always shaking his head no. no. Uh, that was some fella out of um, Arizona. And you would probably call them a legalist. They went so far to one extreme that... They went, they, and I don't, I almost to the point, please don't call me an independent Baptist because I don't want people to think I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's independent Baptist, there's independent fundamental Baptist, and then there's new independent fundamental Baptist. Yeah. And, you know, they're similar, but some of them have no grace whatsoever. 
And that's what Brother Roy was talking about is how a lot of them, they, all they want to do is get around and their basis of fellowship is, what can I argue with you today? <laughs> yeah. And that's not, God didn't call us to argue. Let me share a verse with you. This is what I wanted to share here today. And uh, let's see if I can figure it. I'm still learning this thing out. I still haven't figured out how to share where we're both on one screen. I, I don't know how to do that. But um, here is, well, I did I close it? Should it's not even showing me my Bible here. I wanted to uh, share some Bible verses real quick with you and see if I can pull that up real quick. Because uh, this was the verse I was going to start out with. And it's not letting me share my Bible. So let me try sharing the screen then. We'll just have, no, here we go, a window. There we go, there we go. I was going to read this because our basis of fellowship is we need to be fellowshipping about grace and love and truth and mercy and these are the things that that god loves and a lot of people don't a lot of people they just they want to attack one another and that's something yep. that's really sad paul says it like this in first thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 9 but as touching brotherly love ye need not that i write unto you for ye yourselves are taught of god to love one another and indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all macedonia but we beseech you brethren that you increase more and more and that is definitely something that we as true Christians need to do. We need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Brother Roy has seen what I have seen and others have seen. I mean, I, I can tell you stuff that I've seen behind the scenes. People call me all the time and ask me for things, um, you know, like counsel and, and questions. But a lot of independent Baptists, they're just there's very little grace in, in a lot of them because all they want to do is argue. And that is something Brother Roy doesn't want, something I don't want. Yeah. But well, to me, I don't like to uh, use names because I feel like why even bring up the name of a fellow Amen. Amen. Talk about him and attack him? Because all you're doing is making an enemy that's going to come back and do the same to you. And I told Brother Roy, my favorite verse is leave off contention before it be meddled with. That's a good verse. Amen. But instead of dealing with the man, I do like to hear the issues that they bring up, the, the things that they want to talk about. Because that helps me study my Bible more on each of those topics. So I, I'm, I guess, more of a topical preacher. I want to hear what's the topic that people are talking about now. And let's make sure we're, and what I see, and I told Brother Roy this, is I always see that the right stance is the middle. Amen. Like yep. There's always someone that goes to that extreme or that extreme. And the Bible says it like this, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's like a tight, I can't even say it, a tight rope walker. Yep. Guys walking on a tightrope, he needs to always keep his eye upon the line because when he looks that way, he's going to fall that way. Yeah. That way, he's going to fall that way. The Bible is the line. And we keep our eyes in the book and on the line and we keep looking at it so we don't look that way and fall into liberalism. And so we don't look that way and fall into legalism. Yeah. We stick with where we need to be. And when you get to an extreme, you're an extremist. And that's scary because think about this. If I'm here where I'm supposed to be, number one, I'm with Jesus in the Bible. But if I go over here, now I'm not just against the guy that was there. I'm against that guy over there, too. So now yeah. I have two enemies. If I go over here. So if we stick in the middle where we should be, then we're not going to be enemies. We're that's all right. where we're supposed to be. So Brother Roy has seen a lot of what I've seen and a lot of things that he's seen that a lot of people get off on. And that was something um, Brother Broy told me the other day, and then I uh, saw this. My wife does Facebook. I hate Facebook. I stay away from Facebook. But uh, this is something that someone sent. You guys can pause and read this if you want. And this would be a good time to talk about this with Brother Brother Roy here. Let me read it to you because you emailed. And did you text me or call me? I forget. We talked about this. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. There's people that are, when they go extreme, they go extreme with repentance and things like that. Uh, someone wrote, beware of the new fad, false doctrine, hyper anti-grace repent or anti-repentance. <laughs> I think it's funny how if you don't agree with me, you're a hyper this or a hyper that. Uh, Ruckman used to tell us in class that he was a hyper dispensationalist in the eyes of Bob Jones because they weren't dispensationalists. But see, a hyper dispensationalist, you and I would see as somebody who goes too far, uh, making Paul the first in the body of Christ. No, the early believers were body Amen. of Christ. Amen. Yep. What was revealed to Paul was that the body of Christ was both Jew and Gentile. Yes. So there's always someone that's going to go to an extreme. 
Yes. Yes. Be quick to run to the extreme with them. This error calls the convicting power of the Holy Spirit in salvation a work of man and makes salvation a mere mental agreement to the facts of the gospel without the repentant heart given by the Holy Spirit and genuine, genuine regeneration. When God, the Holy Spirit, shows a man his sin and its consequences, that man's heart turns from that sin to the Savior. The repentant heart turning from sin to the Savior is not a work of man, it is the work of the Holy Spirit and salvation. There is no salvation without the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart. So the Bible does say that the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Amen. The Holy Spirit does convict you of being a sinner. Yes. Amen. I agree with that. Of righteousness. It shows you you're not righteous enough to get to heaven. Right. That's where we need Christ's imputed righteousness. And judgment. You're not going to make it through the judgment without being forgiven. (laughs) Amen. Yeah. So there's some stuff here. So this is what I see as extremism. And you're pointing that out that some people go to one extreme to where they preach against completely repentance. And right. you said that you went to Hiles Anderson. That's where this one fellow went that uh, started what, what would be called the new IFB. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I ever told anyone the story that he called me on the phone when he first started in his ministry and told me how he loved my ministry because I was weak on repentance and I didn't preach hard on repentance or something. And uh, I was like, well, what? And he went to a um, church in a Bible school that everyone knows that the man who was the head of that school said, repentance is the enemy of the gospel. Mm. You remember that saying? Have you ever heard them say that? No, no. So repentance is in the Bible. What is repentance? Well, it's a change of mind. It's a that's change right. from unbelief to belief. I mean, that's what the actual word is. In, in that's the, right. Well, I don't want to the Greek, but the actual Greek word is literally change of mind. Metanoia. Yes. So yes. you look up repentance in, in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, you see a lot of interesting things. Repentance means a change of mind, but it also, it can do with, with your heart as well. Of course. Because repentance also means to feel sorry for something. And uh, good old Webster's, he always puts it in there. Sorrow for anything done or said, the pain or grief which a person experiences in consequence of the injury or inconvenience produced, produced by his own conduct. Conduct. In theology, the pain, regret, or affliction which a person feels on account of his, and it goes on, uh, real repentance, sorrow, or deep contrition for sin, and things like this. But then he says repentance is a change of mind or a conversion from sin to God. So uh, why people just don't go to the dictionary, because we'll we'll see it there. And so you've got a lot of people that go to an extreme with repentance because they say, oh, you don't have to repent. Now, why do they do that? I always like to look at where they are coming from and why they say what they say. Because, again, they always go to an extreme. Always. Yes. Well, if I'm going to be a level-headed fella who's who's on the line, I'm going, now, why is he saying this and why is he going to that extreme? And when it comes to repentance, a lot of people have this idea, well, you got to quit sinning to get saved. No. You ask a lot of people, what does repentance mean? And they say, it means you quit sinning. Well, if you have to quit sinning to get saved, then that is works. Right. Amen. Salvation is not of works. Amen. So is that what it's saying? Who was the first person to repent in the whole Bible? God. <laughs> Genesis 6. I think it's Genesis 6, right? Amen. And it repented God that he made man. Well, if he felt sorry that he made man and they did so much evil. And then he destroyed them with the flood. So you can't say no repentance. That's an extreme view. You right. can't go to the opposite side and say, no, repentance is exactly. quit sinning. So if exactly. you have to quit sinning, you're not saved. <laughs> Balance. Yes. There you go, Roy. Okay. They'll tell you, you weren't saved because you were still doing drugs. There's yep. your lordship salvation. There's your Calvinists. Yep. So that's one extreme. So salvation. Now, other people go to the other extreme and say, well, you breaker. This is what they tell me. Well, you're just one of those. You just believe that a person believes with their mind and they go to heaven. So you just think if I just change my mind, then I go to heaven because I chose to believe. And so you're saved by just believing in your mind. And you know what? That's that's close to what I believe, but they're twisting it. They went to an extreme. Right. right. The Bible says you believe with your what? Heart. Your heart. heart. Now, your heart isn't the little pump that goes boom, 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 boom. When the Bible talks about your heart, that's your soul. That's your very that's being. That's, that's, that's who you are. Uh, the world yeah. calls it your psyche or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. We have people that go to two extremes in our IFB crowd independent fundamental Baptist. Yeah. One extreme is they go so hard with repentance that they go around and say, well, you didn't quit sinning. You weren't saved. They have made a works gospel. And that's a problem. 
But then you have people go to the opposite extreme and say, no, no repentance whatsoever. Now repeat after me. So one, two, three, repeat after me is their way of salvation. I just saw on TV as we're watching the news, uh, Reverend Franklin Graham came on there. And he said, if you want to get saved, and then he mentioned resurrection, burial, resurrection, and, and uh, death, burial, resurrection. He even mentioned the blood of Jesus. And then he says, now repeat this prayer after me. <laughs> what if a person prays that prayer, but there's no faith from, from the heart? Right. right. All they've done is with their mouth said something. Yeah. Are they saved? And um, you know as well as I do, that's that's the Hiles crowd. A lot of them are the one, two, three, repeat after me. And I've met good Hiles and I met not so good Hiles. It's, it's interesting. Just like, well, you would agree with this. I've met good Rockmanites and bad Rockmanites. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So it's not who you went to school with. Right. It's which extreme did you go to if you're not sticking with the Bible? Right. So Amen. we need to stick with the Bible. We need to go by what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches it's faith in the blood of Jesus. Romans 3.25, trusting in what Jesus did. That's right. And faith. What is faith? I, I looked these all up in the Webster's Dictionary. Faith comes from Fido, the Latin Fido, to trust, which is interesting because it's confiar in Spanish or fiar. So it's almost straight from Latin and Spanish to trust. It's to trust in something, to persuade, to draw towards anything, to conciliate, to believe, to obey. Um, belief. Now, now Webster says it this way. Belief. Now, listen, first he says the mind, but watch how he says the no, it's really the heart. Right. Faith. Belief, the assent of the mind to a truth of what is declared by another, resting on his, his authority and veracity without other evidence. The judgment that what another states or testifies is the truth. The assent of the mind to the truth of a proposition advanced by another. Belief or probable evidence of any kind. But then he always goes in theology. Notice that verse or number three. In theology, <laughs> well, that's what we're talking about here. Salvation in theology, the assent of the mind or understanding to the truth of what God has revealed. Simple belief of the scriptures of the being and perfections of God and of the existence, character and doctrines of Christ founded on the testimony of the sacred writers is called historical, historical or speculative. I didn't say that right speculative faith and he goes on but then in evangelical notice this number four evangelical wow the guy's an evangelist that wrote this dictionary 1828 evangelical justifying or saving faith is the ascent of the mind to the truth of a divine revelation on the authority of god's testimony accompanied listen to this accompanied with a cordial assent of the will or approbation of the heart Hey Amen. That's good. An entire confidence or trust in God's character yeah. and declarations and in the character and doctrines of God. Now, I mean, I could go on, but it's not just believing with the mind. It's with all of your heart. You're That's trusting. Right. You're believing in the atoning work of Christ. And so some people go to one extreme or the other. And to go to one extreme and, and preach repentance so hard that you're making it, you have to quit sinning to get saved that's that's a work and that's what yes, damned sir. me for many years i was raised in church mm -hmm. and i would go to bed every night pray, praying lord i hope i repented enough so i don't wake up in hell if i don't wake up you know because i thought i had to quit sinning to get saved and i was trying my best to quit sinning and it didn't work so that's when they then people people that teach that as an extreme extreme confuse people and they're trusting in their repentance rather than trusting in christ right yeah and, some old preacher said, I'm so evil and wicked, my very repentance needs to be repented of. <laughs> mm -hmm. And don't trust in anything you do. Don't trust in your righteousness. Don't trust in your repentance Amen. because you're off the line. Yeah. But then the other side within our group of independent Baptists are those that say, no, no, it's nothing to do with this. It's just repeat after me. And they make Romans 10, 13, the gospel all by itself. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But guess what? They're leaving out the whole context. Let's right. look at that real quick. Let me share the screen. Yeah. I, want, I want people to see, especially with our group, that just because someone says something with their mouth doesn't mean they got saved. Amen. Unless they're believing from the heart. Now, That's people right. make fun of me and they say, well, Breaker says prayer is a work. Well, first of all, I never said that. Secondly, what I try to point out is, there's people that are trusting in the prayer they said rather than the blood Jesus shed. 
So I know for me, before I was saved, I would pray a prayer every night, please God save me. And I was trusting in my prayer. So I was trusting in that as my work, thinking that would get me to heaven. So if a person's lost and doesn't understand the gospel, that can be a work that their thinking will get them to heaven. But prayer in and of itself is not a work. I pray every day. I don't right. think of it as, oh, and I'm sweating so hard. It's so <laughs> hard to pray. No, it's just talking to God. So, but the prayer isn't what saves you. It's right. faith. And Amen. it's coming from here. A lot of people think we pray to God with our mouth. Well, in the Bible, a true prayer is coming from the heart. And let the me see heart, what's in here. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Amen. Let's see if I can share this uh, e sword here. And it says I can't share it. I wonder why. Let me pull it up again. Try that again because I want to share this and go to Romans chapter 10. Oh, uh, let's see. Now it's showing it. See, it always, always the devil knows how to use these devices, doesn't he? <laughs> mm -hmm. We're not ignorant of his devices. So Romans chapter 10. Brother, my heart's desire. So he, he's his he's telling you his heart. And prayer to is uh, to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them their record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. All right. Before you get saved, you got to know something. You got to know the gospel because yeah. faith comes by hearing here by the word of God. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness yeah. have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So that's what people do that go to an extreme. Some people think, look at me, God. I quit sinning. I repented. Look at my righteousness. Now you got to accept me and, and put me in heaven. That's a lost person. Mm -hmm. Other people go the other extreme and say, yeah, Lord, but look, I said the prayer and the prayer saved me. So I trust the prayer. So you got to accept me because I did that. <laughs> you see how they both go. look what they're leaving out. Believing for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. For Moses describeth the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Okay? The law was definitely works. But look at verse six. But the righteousness, which is of faith, all right, imputed righteousness through faith. Amen. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaketh. Wait a minute. Faith speaks. Mm -hmm. Huh. Your mouth can say whatever. But is it the heart speaking or is it just you saying something from the mouth? Which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart. Right there. Faith speaks. It's like God is looking down in your heart to see when you're believing in what he said to save you. And that cries out to God. It's like the heart's crying out to God saying, I believe, I trust, I accept. That's right. That's right. So who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall, who shall descend to the deep? That is to bring down Christ again from, bring up Christ again from the dead. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. This is what most people that are your one, two, three, repeat after me crowds leave out. They will go to Romans 10, 9 and 10 all the time and they skip verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If all a person does is with their mouth say, oh, God, please save me. But there's no faith in the heart in the finished work of Christ and the blood atonement. Do you think they're saved, Brother Roy? Or is that a false profession of faith? And that's 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 just that's missing heaven by 18 inches, man. That's just yep. that's just mine. That's not heart. But that happens all the time in many of churches across our land, especially in so-called independent Baptist churches. They just want you to repeat something. They don't care if you repent. <laughs> repent is a change of mind. Repent is an understanding that, oh, I can't trust in what I do. All right, I accept what Jesus did to save me. Brother, now, Brother, Bra Brother Breaker, you, you remember uh, the old illustration about the chair, you know, as far as trust, you, 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 know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. You know, that, that chair is there and I can believe I can believe in my mind that that chair will probably hold me up. But till I but till I go sit down on that chair and trust that chair with my weight uh, and then, then I have not exercised that that true belief in the chair. Right. So here's verse nine. That, and remember, who's he writing to? He's writing to, to people about the Jews and he's writing to Rome. And there's the who versus what message. A lot of preachers don't preach on this. But when Jesus showed up, it was all believe in his name, believe who he is. Right. Then God revealed to Paul, no, no, no. From now, it's believing in what he did for you. You're just right. by faith, by trusting in what he did, trusting yep. in the blood. So if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Now, what does it mean to confess the Lord Jesus? That Jesus is the Lord. 
That's who he is. We know that, but the, the Jews, they still don't know that. They mm -hmm. still don't know that Jesus is their Messiah. So it sounds like Paul is writing these people and telling them, look, there's some Jews out there that may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but if they're not trusting in their heart that he's raised from the dead, what did he raise from the dead for? To go up and put his blood on the mercy seat, mm -hmm. and he's still not. So a lot of people, they put all the emphasis on the mouth. Why aren't they putting the emphasis on what the Bible does, the heart? That's right. That's because right. The next verse says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, unto salvation, what does that mean? Some people read this verse out of context and they say, well, when you confess, then you're saved. That's another work. No, That's no. Catholic, doesn't it? Don't the Catholics put all the emphasis on confession? Yeah, uh, <laughs> oh no. When I read confession is made unto salvation, confession is telling what happened. Exactly. Exactly. I go in and I steal a cookie out of the kitchen, and my wife said, "Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar?" I'm like, "I confess." Now, yep. that we could have been two hours or two weeks before. Yeah. Did I just eat the cookie when I said I confess, or did it happen before? And then I confess to the fact that it happened. So when you're saved, you confess. Yeah, I'm saved. Yep. So it's not saying that with our mouth the confession is what saves us. But there's some people out there that preach confession saves you. Well, maybe they're a Jesuit. <laughs> maybe they need to go join their local Catholic church because they put so much emphasis on confession. They make that into a work. And that is sad, Brother Roy. It's no, not amen. A amen, bro. That's why I always read that. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. What kind of righteousness? Imputed. New Testament. Uh, body of Christ. Mystery. Righteousness. The imputed righteousness with the heart. Man believeth under righteousness. That's that imputed righteousness. And then after I've received the imputed righteousness, I'm saved. Then mouth, then confession is with made with the mouth about that. Right. That I'm saved. Not I just got <laughs> saved by saying yeah. it. So, verse 11, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now. People say that call is just with the mouth. No, the context is the calling comes from the heart. No, and it's, it's all about the heart, it man. Belief. It has to do with faith. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, one interesting thing about that, almost every time you see that in the Old Testament, it's always about Israel and them calling mm -hmm. on God for salvation in the tribulation. I just throw that out there. Nobody ever seems to mention that. I'm just, I find that quite interesting. Yeah. But calling him on the Lord today has to be through faith. Yes. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So how do you put it out of your mouth if you're not trusting from the heart in the right. finished work of right. Christ? How do you, and how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. For they have not all obeyed the gospel. How do you obey the gospel? You remember, we looked at the dictionary. It mm. said that faith is obeying. <laughs> That's even in the dictionary. So That's obey right. the gospel by believing. That's the context Amen. of this verse. For Isaiah Amen. said, Lord, who hath believed our report. So the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I've heard some people in our camp, if you'll call them that. I, I don't like to use the term camp. People say, what camp are you in, Brother Breaker? I say, I'm mm. without the camp with Jesus. Amen. I'll be Amen. happy. Yeah. But. In our camp, there are people that say that you don't have to hear the gospel to get saved. You just say, oh, God, save me. And you repeat a prayer and you're saved. No, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hear about. There's something you got to hear preached. You need to hear 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You need to hear about the blood atonement of Christ. Romans 3, 25 is a great verse. I, I hate that people leave that one out. So faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And it goes on there. I won't read the rest of it. But uh, look at what it says in the last verse. But to Israel, he saith all day long, have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Now, gainsaying is a weird word. Look that up in the Webster's Dictionary and see what yeah. it means. But it's funny what it means, but, but, but what it actually is, two words, gainsaying. There's people out there that think they'll gain something just by saying something. Yeah, yeah. There are people out there that teach the Romans 10, 13, 1, 2, 3, pray after me. And they preach it like it's a mystical prayer that if you repeat this prayer, you're mystically saved. Right. You don't have to know the gospel or anything. Right. That's witchcraft. Did you yeah. know witchcraft is speaking things into existence? Yeah. Are we saved through witchcraft? And so people say, Brother Breaker's too hard. He's against prayer. That's a lie. 
My dad got saved while he was praying. I know people get saved while they're praying, but I also know people got saved without praying because they believed and they were saved when they believed. So I'm very leery of people that run around and they go to an extreme. You got the extremist on one side that it's it's uh, something you do or don't do that saves you. And you've got the extremist on the other side that say it's what you say that saves you or what you pray. Amen, Brother Breaker. And and, and then that that prayer uh, doesn't necessarily have to be with the mouth. It's like like the publican in Luke that he prayed thus with himself, silently wow. to himself. Prayer. Uh, most of our prayers are prayers of the heart. Uh, uh, yeah. and not passing our lips and and god god hears the prayer and the call of your heart uh the same way he he, he hears from your mouth so one guy one guy it, it, it he gets saved he calls out he calls the lord from his heart another one wait well, somebody else is there you know and and right. so that's where the prayer is 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 like when we're in church we pray together we pray out loud so we can share in one another's prayers but if you're all by yourself if you don't need to say it out loud god god can hear your right. heart just fine <laughs> exactly exactly you're right so there's people that are saved and when they trust it's like we read in the verse they're the the faith speaks to god so it's the heart so, so faith is, is is a prayer i guess you could say but it's not the act of praying that saves us right whether right. we're believing at the same time and that's it's so sad to see so many deceived trusting in a prayer they said. Yes. And I saw that and I've seen that with so many other people. So when I preach on this, it, it blesses my heart to get feedback from people. That, oh, man, you helped me understand it, Brother Breaker. I, I was trusting in my prayer. I wasn't trusting in the, uh, the propitiation of Christ. So here's the problem that Jesus found with the Pharisees. You would think the Pharisees were all saved. <laughs> <laughs> because they all claimed to be of God, but they weren't. They were hypocrites. Why did God not want them? What was the problem? This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That's right. When you're putting all the emphasis on the mouth and not on the heart, you've gone to an extreme. Yeah. You're a Pharisee because you're telling a person, if you'll just say this, then you'll go to heaven. What if they say it, but they're not believing what they say? Right. I went to a Muslim mosque one time and talked to the Muslims and tried to ask them, you know, how do you become a Muslim? And they said, you say Allah is God. So in their mind, if you just with your mouth say Allah is God, now you're a convert to Islam. You don't have to believe it in your heart. You just say it. <laughs> right. 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 And a lot of people have. Uh, they come to him and they say, we're going to cut your head off unless you say Allah is God. And the guy goes, OK, Allah is God. He doesn't believe it. He just didn't want his head cut off, you know. So that's happened many times in the Muslim world and through history and things like that. So it's a heart matter and is what salvation is, not yep. just a, a word matter. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Now, let, let me show you what Jesus says over here in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 15. And then I'm going to show you how Paul reiterates this. Paul says the same thing in Acts. And you're going through Acts now and you'll see this. And is it Acts 26, I believe it is? For this people's heart is wax gross. Jesus is speaking of the Jews, and he says they got a heart problem. And their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Converted is salvation. Amen. So before you can be saved, you've got to hear something, and you've got to understand, and then believe. Yeah. Amen. And many of your modern churches leave that out. And I'm I'm not yeah. going to attack Hiles because I know you went to Hiles, but I'm sure you would tell me you saw that firsthand. The shower. Yeah, when, when I that was one thing I got disillusioned when I, you know, when I was uh, going to the Bible college and stuff is is uh, you know, I had enough sense as as green as I was, I had enough sense that you know, they're okay, get this guy to pray this prayer, bang, bang, he's going to heaven now. And I just knew that that wasn't real. I knew that wasn't real, and that kind of like that kind of turned that kind of turned me off. I'm like, hold on, is this all fake? Because uh, this say this certainly isn't real, and that 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 kind of had something to do with uh, uh, my my disillusionment disillusionment and my walking away from the ministry. Right, and and that's what many within independent Baptists have become, is they become uh, like that, and they have what I call the one two three repeat after me gospel. 
of the Romans road. And it's just, this verse says you're a sinner. This verse says Jesus died for you. This verse says now repeat after me. And you can go to heaven in three verses. <laughs> now repeat after me. And people will do that. They will repeat a prayer. But where is the faith from the heart? And why didn't they even tell them what to put their faith in? They left out the blood. There's Romans 3.25 in the Bible. They could have gone there. There's Romans 5.11, which is we dow their joy because we received the atonement. But look how Paul reiterates. I said 26. It's 28. Paul repeats the words of Jesus in Acts 28. Exactly what Jesus said. For yeah, the heart right. of the people is wax gross, their ears are dull of hearing. So you you see that in the Bible. And I just am so saddened to see um, people that claim to be Bible believers just going to an extreme. And they're either on the extreme of Calvinism to, to the point preaching repentance so hard that God has to regenerate your nature before you can believe. And that happens by your quit sinning. <laughs> That's wrong. That's the right. Protestant belief. And then they go to the opposite extreme. Well, no, salvation is so simple. You just say, oh, God, save me, and you're going to heaven. It doesn't matter if you believe the gospel or not. Both of those are complete heresy. No, yeah. you've got to hear the gospel preached. You've got to understand, and then you believe, and you're saved when you believe. Amen. And it's not from the head. It's faith no. from the heart with all and of your brother, heart. I always, I always explain to it, it's like an opening of the heart. It's a, it's an accepting and, 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 a, and a receiving. And like, you know, somebody tells me, uh, tells me something. And I can say, well, and I don't believe that. Or and so and another way of saying that, if you say something and I go, nah, I I, I don't accept that. No, I, I don't receive that. So we understand that it that when we've heard the gospel and 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 our heart and our heart is being dealt with, then what we're doing is we're opening our heart to to him. Uh, so salvation isn't a memorizing a formula is receiving a person and that and that's what happens in, in true heartfelt salvation is that jesus christ and the person of his holy spirit comes into your heart and makes you one with him and baptizes you into the body of christ uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's something it, that actually happens in the spirit in the soul and the heart of a man uh, so if, if that didn't happen you didn't get saved no matter what you said or prayed or believed or anything if the heart did not respond in faith to the lord jesus and the holy spirit didn't come in there uh, uh, you still lost. <laughs> right. So like John 1, 12, but as many as received him. Amen. Romans chapter five says something. You accept it. You accept it. Romans five. I went too far. Uh, Eleven. And not only so, but we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom you have now received the what? It's the atonement. Amen. Amen. Under the Old Testament, you have to have an atonement and you receive that. Remember in the Old Testament, they took a lamb or a goat or a turtle dove or whatever they could afford and they cut the throat and the blood poured out and they gave it to the priest the priest offered it up and then the person said okay the atonement has been received mm. and, I, and i receive it because he put his hand on the head of that saying this is for me i received yeah. this yeah. forgiveness for my sins but also ephesians 1 13 and this is being left out of modern christianity the importance of knowing something i believe in what i call a no so salvation there's Amen. something you need to know before you can get saved. What do you need to know? That Jesus died in your place for your sins, and it's through faith that you can be saved by receiving what he did. Amen. In whom you also, whom you also trusted. And notice that's uh, King James in italics there. But boy, I believe those italics are inspired. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> and, and in whom you also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth. So you mean you have to hear something to get saved? After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel okay. of your soul. So you have to hear the gospel before you can get saved. So just knocking on someone's door and then saying, hey, repeat this prayer after me. Yeah. Does that get you to heaven if that person's never heard the gospel? Yeah. In whom you also, after that, you believed. Oh, so we're saved by believing. Yeah. Uh, one guy, someone said, Breaker believes you could just believe your way into heaven. Well, yeah, because I'm on the line. And that's what my line says, the Bible. Yeah, line, yeah. Line for, yeah it's through believing. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the That's earnest right. of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That's the right. earnest of our inheritance. That means eternal security. You yep. know, what earnest yep. is earnest is a down payment. <laughs> so we get the Holy Spirit in us as a down payment because we are going to heaven no matter what. We can't lose it.
Amen. So, I love sharing this with people, and but I'm just so saddened that the once great independent Baptists, which is what I'm ordained as, and which is what you are, how they they get away from the truth. Yeah, and you've got them taking sides. It's like they're departing from what was truth and what is truth and what they used to believe. And now they're taking extreme sight. Now they're attacking those of us that are sticking with the truth. Why? Yeah. Brother, Brother Breaker, I, I think um, that uh, in a lot of ways, this has to do with this modern era that we have now where people are leaving. Um, there's, a, there's a safety in the, in the body of Christ and in the church when, 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 it's in the biblical formula that uh, that the apostle Paul lays out in the structure of the church and and the, and the pastors and elders and teachers and and when the body of Christ comes together, there's a safety in that. There's the presence of the Holy Spirit there, and and there's a unity. And if something that's wrong enters in, that you know everybody's going to be like, ah, no, 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 no. But but what happens is people. People get at, separate themselves in this day and age from church, from the body. They get out there all by themselves, listening to all these other little voices, and they don't have any accountability. They don't have any any check, and and they get they get like Pied Piper down these 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 wrong roads, and and get out there, and and uh, I I think that's a a real a real source of what we're seeing is uh, um, now praise God for YouTube channels like yours and, and like Gene Kim's and other great Bible believing channels that are teaching the truth rightly divided praise God. But there, uh, but 90 something percent of them out there are the wrong voices that are teaching the wrong things. And people are, People are just getting led off into the woods and they're getting fooled and they they think, well, I know more than my pastor now. I, I know more than, than all this. And, and, you know, they get off, they get off in the weeds. They get off in some nonsense. And uh, I think that's just the, the, the latter days of the great falling away, the end, end of the church, end of the church period, uh, the people shall depart from the faith give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And I look at all that going on and I praise God, Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> Amen. Well, you said it perfectly. And again, it all goes back to what I said. Their eyes are not on the line. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept. The line is the Bible. And they get off in one way or another because they're not on the line. And the Bible tells us, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yeah, edifying yeah. means to build up. And it seems like a lot of people today just want to tear down. And that's yeah, the opposite yeah. of edifying. So that's disobedience to the Bible. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God into a perfect man. Well, when will that happen? When we get a glorified body, because it's not there yet. <laughs> that's right. Yep. The measure of the stature. Now, see there, I'm short, so I'll be tall one day. Thank God. That's a Bible verse for me. I'm going to be like, yeah, Amen. Uh, unto the stature of the fullness of Christ. By the way, Roy is a lot shorter than me. <laughs> Sorry, Roy. <laughs> uh, I thought you'd be taller, but he's like, gone. He knows karate, so don't make him mad, man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it says, and this is, this is for all of our independent Baptists out there that we love, because we love them. Remember this, that ye, that we henceforth be no more children. Don't act like a bunch of children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cutting craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. It's funny how it says lie. You know, a lot of lies being spread out there. Uh, I found things out about me, Brother Roy, when I got in the ministry. I didn't realize that was all these things that people lied and said I was. <laughs> right, right, right. Funny. I see it. I see it out there. All, yeah. Yeah. yeah they, hey, they were saying they were saying on Facebook, I wasn't even saved the other day. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so it says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. And that's what you and I are trying to do, is just trying to edify. And yep. tell them in love, not yep. attacking. Yeah, um, yeah. We we're trying to put off the the old man. I mean, the old man ended you up in jail, <laughs> yeah. brother, brother Breaker. And that was that was something that was something that was a great learning experience in 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 prison and doing ministry in prison. Is you have to you have to respect people, and you have to you have to treat people with respect in prison. Uh, because if you don't, there's going to be problems. 
And yeah. so what we what we get out here is we get a bunch of keyboard warriors who are hiding uh, uh, somewhere in a room behind the an anonymity of a, of a keyboard and they mm -hmm. just talk to somebody in any kind of way which you absolutely would not talk to them if they were standing there in your oh, presence yeah. and in your face uh, right. it, it, the set, what we had in prison that was similar to that was when you got sent to the hole you got isolation you got lockdown everybody back there is slammed in other words they're not coming out of the cell and mixing with anybody else and they know that so some of them guys will get yelling on their door and they just they, they're going to talk so bad uh, uh but they they know they're never going to have to face you and answer for what they say and we call those cell soldiers and i guess the equivalent term is keyboard warrior out here i say this never say anything on the internet that you would not say to somebody if they were standing right in front of your face. And while yeah. you're at it, pretend they're Mike Tyson and he's really mad. Right. Right. I mean, we're taught as children not to be like that toward people. It's really yeah. sad, but they're not just, this isn't about being a man or a wimp. You know, they say, well, you're a wimp because you won't talk to me. No, this is about obeying the Bible. Amen. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Yeah. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Look at the context of grieving the Holy Spirit. All these things grieves the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. So how that's come right. they're not grieved when they do it? <laughs> yeah. Could it be they're not saved? Could it be they're one of those two? Trusting Thank in their good works that they do, thinking they're saved? Or could they have said a prayer and they're trusting their prayer rather than the blood of Christ? I yeah. hope that's not, I'm not accusing right. them of being saved. I'm just asking the question. If you're saved, wouldn't you be grieved with screaming and hollering and being angry and hateful and mean to others? Wouldn't that grieve the spirit within you? It does. It does to me. You know, I get in, sometimes I'll get in some of these uh, uh, discussions and, uh, uh, and, and I get done and I just kind of feel defiled afterward. And I got to go to the Lord and, and, and check my heart. And it's like, man, Lord, I, I went a little too far there. Uh, 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 that wasn't that wasn't right. Forgive me. You know, uh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's 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 not edifying at all. So when I first started in the ministry, this was back in the 90s. They just had the Internet come out and they had these chat rooms come out. And I would go to some of these chat rooms, these Bible independent Baptists. And I was just I didn't do it, but for like a week or two, and I'm done because yeah. they're crossing, yeah. they're, they're calling names. I mean, I I learned some new dirty words from from Christians. Wow. Isn't wow. that horrible? And and I forgot them on purpose because I don't want yeah. to. But that's what you said. It's it's a keyboard warrior who is emboldened yeah. Yeah. because you can't see that person. So I'm going to say something hateful and mean. Well, that's, that's right. not what the Bible says. That's Let all right. bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Yeah. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. Always goes back to your heart. That's right. Be kind heart with all diligence for out of it is the issues of life. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So it's just, it's wonderful to go back to the Bible. And to me, it's wonderful to find another brother that believes the Bible because there's so few. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I just want to find more that are like us that want to be level headed and not fly off. See, when a person flies off the handle, and you say something that triggers them, that's not a mature Christian. Right, right. And the Bible says to be mature. And there's a thing in the Bible that very few preach on, and it's called temperance. That's right. That's right. Temperance is basically the best way to define temperance is self control. Yes. Being able to control yourself without going off in, in, into like and becoming like a little second grader with a tantrum, you know? That's just, that's not a mature person that's not a mature christian there's something wrong there and it's probably something wrong here yeah if for the servant the servant of the lord must not strive mm -hmm. but be patient all men apt to teach amen yeah, gentle long suffering. <laughs> amen yeah. amen long suffering so um, so that's why I'm an ordained independent Baptist and we went to a, a well you you knew brother Ruckman he wrote to you I guess we can talk about Ruckman. A lot of people ask me all the time, what about Ruckman? Some people hate him. Some people love him. Some people go in to such an extreme, they call him like not even saved. They call him right. racist. They call him, they didn't know the man. And he, right. he wrote to you right. many, many, many letters. Tell us about how you met Dr. Ruckman and things like that. Yes, uh, I, uh, 
I guess it was about uh, 89 or 90 um, that uh, I, I wrote to Dr. Ruckman and Dr. Ruckman wrote me back in prison and that began um, 25 years of uh, letters and ministry uh, to me. And, you know, Dr. Ruckman, he loved prisoners. He loved prisoners. And uh, I, I, I've got my favorite letter. If you, if you go on my YouTube channel, um, you go to the video, uh, Peter Ruckman, my friend, and I, I read, it's a three-page letter. It's my favorite letter. And it's basically Dr. Ruckman telling an old jailbird how to stay out of the slammer. And it's a great, it's a great letter, but I'll tell you, uh, he, he, he loved, he loved sinners. Uh, he loved men in prison. He, he loved people in rescue missions. Uh, the, the, uh, it was like, it was like Jesus. Jesus, Jesus didn't, didn't, didn't smash out on, on, on regular sinners. Uh, uh, Jesus talked bad about the Pharisees, about the, the ivory tower religious leaders of the day. That's who Jesus was hard on. He wasn't, he wasn't hard on the woman taken in adultery and the, and the, and the drunkard and the, and the, and the publican. And neither was Dr. Ruckman. Dr. Ruckman had a heart for all sinners and led, led, untold numbers of uh, of prisoners and and, and drunkards to, to to christ and and loved them hey and i'll tell you what uh you know my my christian uh, uh years were a little bit loop-de-loop but you know i i didn't have that that calvinistic fruit and evidence of salvation for a long time i i i, I struggled in, with my flesh and with drugs you for years and, and when all the sweeter spirited brethren kicked me to the curb and so he, he ain't saved and would have nothing to do with me, Dr. Ruckman never quit writing me and he never and he never gave up on me. And you know why? Because he believed every single word of his Bible, including Philippians 1, 6, that being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it. And Dr. Ruckman was just a simple enough man to believe that God was going to do that in my life. And uh, I wish I wish he 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 could what was still around now since I got out and I'm in the ministry and everything. But, you know, if he's in that cloud of witnesses and God lets lets folks in heaven, which I kind of think they do from time to time, maybe not 24 seven. But I I think that that that. There is a, a cloud of witnesses and folks in heaven. Uh, God lets them see a little bit about what's going on down here right now. And uh, I, I like to think that uh, uh, that somewhere up there, the old Dr. Ruckman's like, well, old rascal finally got it together. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Amen. So, yeah, well, we, we knew Ruckman for many years. My dad went there for many years. And... Uh, my dad didn't graduate. He just audited classes because he had a degree as a, he was a weatherman for years. But my dad had a health food store and that's how he met Ruckman. Oh, uh, some wow. of the guys at Ruckman school came into my dad's health food store. And my dad was a, a lost Pentecostal. And wow. uh, you can read dad's t um, testimony on my website, uh, thecloudchurch.org, and how they came in and people from Ruckman's were like, why are you selling these books? Because my dad's health food store was half health food store and part bookstore. And he was trying to sell Christian books, but they were the, the Joel Olstein type books, you know, Wait, like, 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 like how to, how to show people you care about them. It's, it's silly little milk sop stuff yeah. instead of true Bible doctrine. And when dad started reading Ruckman stuff, he's like, man, you know what? Um, yeah, he, he threw away most of the books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Like that. And my dad went to Bible school there. I went to Bible school there. But it, it's just so sad to see people talking smack about you and saying things that aren't true. Right. Because right. a lot of times nowadays, people believe it. Yeah. They believe the first thing they hear. Yeah. And yeah. I remember several times in my life while I was in Bible school, I came home and dad says, well, I just got off the phone with Ruckman. I'm like, what? What? You're, you're calling Ruckman? He goes, yeah. So and so said somebody said this about you. <laughs> yeah, I called him up. I'm like, Ruckman, why did you believe this? That man said this about my son. Don't you know the truth about this guy? And and uh, it's just funny that that I remembered that the other day. But mm. I don't I don't want to be like that. That's why when people start gossiping, the first thing I do is just like, would you just no? <laughs> Amen. I have, Amen. I stuff in this head. I don't need anything no. else. I call it TMI. Too much no. information. Please That's don't right. give me more. 
I don't need it. And if, if it's there, I want to contact the other person. Yeah. So if someone ever says something about somebody, don't believe it. Always contact yeah. the other person. And yeah. there have been uh, several pastors that I heard this or that or the other thing about. And I talked to them not long ago. They contacted me and asked me to come preach for them and things like that. And I'm just, I'm not traveling like I used to um, because I feel that internet travels more and it's easier. But um, I, I asked them, I said, you know, you hear this stuff about you. I never believed it, but tell me your side. And it's always, you know, somebody twists something or someone yeah. takes it. It's Out never context. cherry picking. So, so you're obviously not trying to hide anything. You, yeah. you tell us straight up what you went through and you made mistakes in life. But isn't it great how the Lord can turn that around for good? Amen. Amen. We call it, we, hey, we call it keeping it penitentiary real. You know, there's. Right. There's something about the prison experience on a prison yard or a prison tier when, you, when everybody's had everything taken from them and you're all wearing the same clothes and you're all looking at each other 24-7 every day that, uh, you know, removes a lot of uh, phoniness and artifact and, uh, you know, everything just gets real uh, in there. And, mm -hmm. and if I, I learned anything in prison, you know, it was it was just keeping it simple and being penitentiary real about it that you can't you can't be too much fake in prison because everybody's watching you all day every day so you know it's different out here you can you can go to church and be one thing and and then run over here and be something else or, you know and you, you can have a lot of put on a lot of different faces uh, out here but in prison <laughs> you in the same room with the same people all the time so who you who yeah. you are it, it comes out <laughs> right well, I'm sure people are going to ask, and I don't know if you said this, yeah. why did you go to prison? So why don't oh. you tell us that and then tell well, us I'll, not to do what you did, because I want hey, people hey. to know you're not telling them to do this. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> no, I when I started in drugs, well, of course, drugs take money. So I, I started off doing burglaries and um, then eventually did my first armed robbery and i'm like oh that's a lot easier because you don't have to go sell stuff that you burgled so that that's why that's what i was i was a stick up man and uh, so i did uh, uh, all different i stuck up you name it uh, every everything from a convenience store to banks uh, and every everything in between that's what i did i i was a stick up man and uh, I got so many of them that uh, I started picking up habitual criminal enhancements. Uh, um, right now, uh, according to man, uh, I'm on parole for life because I have a life sentence under the large, violent, habitual criminal enhancement in, that, in the state of Nevada. I'm believing God maybe for a pardon one day. But uh, uh, as of right now, they say I'm on parole for life. And then during the course of all my stuff, I escaped twice. A matter of fact, uh, for a while in the Nevada system, my nickname or yard name, as they had there, they called me Houdini because I got away on them a couple times. Got slipped up underneath a produce truck, rode it to town, went on a crime spree. Uh, you know, that's as I guess that's why I'm like I don't want to talk about me, but people are like your story is a little different. People are interested, so God has used that as an opening, you know, to get in churches and and, and you know, people tell the story. And then, then I get then I get to teach and preach, and people say, "Oh, it's not just a testimony." Oh, oh boy, might know his Bible a little bit too. Had, had a little time to dig into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. So it's safe to assume that you have repented. <laughs> a amen. Amen. Absolutely. I, I'm uh, I'm doing. I'm doing Wednesday nights for my pastor right now. He has some health problems, so he's been going to some doctors. So he's turned Wednesday nights a uh, 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 Bible study and and prayer service over to me uh, for uh, for a little while. We'll see how long it goes, but we're doing a um, a little series right now on just some of our our basic beliefs. Uh, if as far as dispensationalism, rightly dividing. Uh, last week we did what we just talked about about the heart turning to Christ as far as that being what repentance means in salvation. And uh, tomorrow night, we're going to come over and we're going to get into first John and we're going to talk about the, uh, the, the, re the repentance, the constant repentance in maintaining our fellowship and our, our, our state with God. So yeah, that's, and that, and that's, that's what I, that's what I had to do is, you know, that's what we have to do. And that is get, get honest with God get real with God. We have to agree with God 
about what's going on in our lives and, 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 and let the Holy Spirit point out what what needs to be addressed, what needs change, what needs correction. And, and we just and we agree with God. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's a, that's what's so beautiful about the blood of Jesus. The, the blood of Jesus is always available. It, it, it's always available. We get it, it, it didn't didn't run out back then. Uh, but 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 we the blood of Jesus is constantly, constantly, constantly. We, we know. And this this is this this is dispensational salvation. Gene Kim did a real good video on on this. Is we have to understand we're two people that you know we are we are the spirit man, we are the saved man, the sealed man, the seated in heavenly heavenly place in Christ Jesus man. But we're also we're also the flesh. That there's that there's that every believer. I say Christians and those schizophrenic bipolar people on the planet. We're actually two people. So as far as your spirit man is concerned, it, it hey that's one that's one that's one and done. That man is perfected forever. Is unable to sin. There's a part of you that can do no right. And there's a part of you that can do no wrong. The spirit man can do no wrong. But your flesh, you, your flesh didn't get saved. You still have your fleshly man, and you still and you still need to to stay in fellowship with God. And that 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 does that does entail repentance. But that's but that's not not to do with your salvation. That's that's it to do with your sanctification and your fellowship with God. My very first pastor, C. R. Williams, down in uh. uh uh, Central Baptist Church in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, told me this, and it's a wonderful thing. I've never forgot it. He says, in the Christian life, he says, there's two ships. He says, your relationship is the one that takes you to heaven, and your fellowship is the one that keeps you happy on the way there. Amen. That's wonderful. That's good. Amen. Well, now is a good time for questions, and um, I've got one question they asked to tell us their, your um channel on youtube it's old school bible baptist right roy yes, did sir. you have another one too did you have nope. another one channel okay, nope, old that, that's it old school bible baptist i am old school bible baptist uh, on uh email i'm old school bible baptist on facebook i'm old school bible baptist on uh youtube and i just bought the domain name for my website old school bible baptist so i am old school bible baptist <laughs> well amen amen okay well, let's see if you've got some in the chat. Now, remember, Brother Roy can't see the chat. So if you have a question, put at Robert Breaker. That way I can see it come out like bold so I can see the question. If you have a question for me or if you have a question for Brother Roy, I'm sorry I didn't have any moderators today. Um, usually uh, some people help me out with that. But um, so far the chat's been decent, I, I but I haven't paid full attention. I don't see crazy people attacking and calling names. but um, so far, so good. That's all and, right. We'll bring them on. <laughs> amen. Brother Roy is uh is a Krav Maga champ. No, what? Well, well, I was in Krav Maga. You were what? Uh, uh, I, I do uh, uh karate, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, judo, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Okay, that's amazing. So, anybody have any questions? Uh, please put them here for us. Um, some people are saying there's some trolls in the chat. I can't keep up with the chat. It's moving so much. That's but, all right. Uh, you hey. have a question for me or Brother Roy? Put it in the chat here. What I say to the trolls is, Jesus loves you and so do I. That's why I tell people used to come in prison. That I mean, they'd, they'd be so full of the devil. They'd be just all right, ready to hit you, man. And I just, I just, hey, Jesus loves you, so do I. Jesus loves you, so do I. Jesus loves you, so do I. I mean, hey, wh what are you going to say to that, right? <laughs> exactly. It says, can you define repentance? Well, I think we did that. It, yes. it actually has two definitions. One is just change of mind, um, but the other is to feel sorry for something. And the Ruckman yeah. used to tell us in class that, you know, repentance is turning from trusting your righteousness to trusting Christ's righteousness. Right. Right. Or it's turning right. from trusting one thing to trusting another thing. So all these people that aren't on the line that have gone to an extreme, they need to turn. They need to repent. <laughs> because right. if right. you're trusting in you quit sinning, then you need to repent from that and trust yeah. Christ alone and his righteousness. Don't trust your own righteousness. And if you it's think all about, it's all about the heart. When repentance is the heart turning from whatever, what, what, you know, what it, what, whether it was religion, whether it was just you, 
just you. See, that's what Dr. Ruckman said. He said, it's not being so sorry for your for what you've done. It's being sorry for what you are. And that's mm -hmm. and that's and that's what repentance and salvation is. It's you are turning to Christ from what you were. All of it, the whole the whole package. You know, you were going that way. <laughs> and you can't separate them. Repentance and faith toward Christ. You can't separate them. It's one move. It's one motion. It, it, it's a work of the Holy Spirit that shows you you need saved. You need saved from something. So when you turn to Christ to be saved from whatever, it's one motion. You're turning from that to him. It, it's, it's not a work. It, it's, it is a work, but it's a work of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Mm -hmm. right and again it's just believing and it's through faith yes and when you're yes. saved then the holy spirit comes in so it's not calvinism where they say the holy spirit regenerates you so you can believe <laughs> no we free will can believe and then the holy spirit but the holy spirit is working in the sense the holy spirit is convincing us of sin and righteousness that's and right, that's, right. that's his job um, Amen. Sean says can you send prayers to us down here in port charlotte and inglewood in the north port area where the hurricane came. They're still going through some things. So please, guys, remember to pray for them. Amen. What they went through. Many have asked me, did I go through the hurricane? No, it went south of us, but it sure affected my wife's family and okay. a lot of our friends down there. So please, please keep them in prayer. For sure. Um, another question is, what can you say to people who hate Paul and say he is Satan? Brother Roy, you want to take that one? Wow, I see that all the time. You know, I mean, you get it's like by it's like polar opposites. Over here, you got the Paul onlyism, and they'll only listen to Paul. And then you over here on, on, on this dude, they, you got these people that say that Paul Paul was a a, a a false apostle, and he came in and he 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 ruined he ruined the Christianity. He ruined the faith. He was of the devil. So you know. Um, that's a uh, wow. That's that's a hard. That's a hard question. What can you say to them? Uh, they that that is a point of such deception. And I would just say, where are you getting your faith from? Are you getting your faith from the Bible? Well, how are you going to pick and choose? Well, I'm going to believe this part of the Bible and not believe this part of the Bible. What you're doing, in effect, you're making up your own religion. You're making you're you're making up your if you don't accept a look at all it's either all of the by all of the Bible and all of Christ or none of the Bible and none of Christ. Uh, you can't make up your own your own religion. The final authority is the Bible. And if you, you either accept it all or you reject it all. Amen. Amen. And if you know your Bible, you know why Paul is there. Yeah, and the yeah. message was to the Israel first who Jesus is, and when yeah. they denied three times their Messiah, God sent Paul and said, "Go tell everyone to trust in what I did." That's and right. Paul says that he was chosen by God from his mother's womb. Paul says that he was the apostle to the Gentiles, Romans yep. chapter eleven and verse thirteen. So Paul is in the Bible for a reason, and yep. there's revelations from Jesus given to Paul. So you yep. are not yep. truly following Jesus unless you're following Paul. Amen. Otherwise, you're just following part of what Jesus said, not yep. all of what Jesus said, because Jesus gave Paul the rest. And Paul's epistles are the heart of New Testament doctrine. Absolutely. I use I use the illustration of uh, we have these devices, computers and, you know, listen, I never had a computer before a year and a half ago. Never had a computer, never had a cell phone. This is all new to me. But what do they do? They update with new information, right? You got to get an update, the most current, the most current version or whatever, right? You've got to go with the newest information. And if you're not going with the uh, revelation of the gospel of grace given to the apostle Paul, you're running on outdated information. You are not operating on the updated uh, uh, news. <laughs> Amen. That's, that's a perfect way to say it. And that's good. And again, line upon line, precept upon precept. Yep. Some yep. go to one extreme, some go to another. So you said it perfectly. And some go into what we call hyper dispensationalism. Right. And for us, a hyper dispensationalist is someone who says that Paul was the first one in the body of Christ. 
I can't go there and I can't believe that because I read my Bible. The body of Christ starts with Christ. That's why it's called the body of Christ. Amen. That's why it's not called the body of Paul. Yeah. He's the head. <laughs> but when it started, nobody knew what it was. It right. showed revelation right. to Paul that, hey, we're the body of Christ. And by the way, it was the early Jews. Some people say the little flock, the little flock. Well, that little flock after the cross were the body of Christ. That's and right. They Amen. Didn't know it. They just Amen. didn't know it. It's so they clear, brother. Christ. It reveals it to us that we're all in the body of Christ, both Jew and Gentile. Yes. So you understand that. Now, many of these hyper dispensations that I've met, now, I don't know if all of them believe this because they're different groups and it's hard yes. to know if they all believe the same thing, but they Not all believe me. Paul is the first in the body of Christ. That's one thing. Right. A lot of them believe that the body of Christ is only Gentiles and no Jews. Yeah. So what I do is I ask them, so what was Paul? And when they say he was a Jew, it's like their head explodes. Right. <laughs> oh, right. no, I just undid everything I just said. Yeah. yeah. So if he's the first one in the body of Christ, then you've got a Jew in the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, the shame, the shame of that, the shame about that with the, uh, with the hyper dispensationalist brother breaker is they start off right. You know, they 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 start right in the dividing. They 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 recognize uh, they recognize the uh, specific ministry of Paul. They recognize the body of Christ, the revelation of the mystery. They they get going and they get going. But see, it just gets so good to them. They don't know when to stop. You know, it's like painting a picture. There's a point where an artist. When it's done, one more brush stroke is going to ruin the whole thing. And they get so divide happy about this. They just got, they just keep a chopping long after all the divisions have already been brought out. <laughs> now, some of them are sweet, nice people and yeah, they yeah, the gospel yeah. right. And I appreciate them for that. I wish they would just get on the same page with the rest of it. But um, some of them, too, just like to attack. And that's another thing. We don't attack one another. We're supposed to love one another. Yeah. And, but, you know, they, some some of them have more grace than our independent Baptist brethren. And yes. that, yeah. That's kind of shameful. If you're an independent Baptist, maybe you need to. You're too far an extreme. They call themselves grace believers. Maybe you need to have a little bit more. Maybe get right here because <laughs> right. you're the opposite extreme of that's no right. grace. Yeah. So this has been a really good live stream talking about extremism and how people get to extreme. And hopefully right. we need to be balanced. And a balance is not over here or over here. A balance is in the middle. And that's not compromising. I'm not saying we compromise. I'm saying we stay with the book and not go into an extreme Amen. on either side. Amen. Brother, I know you've I know you've heard this before, but it says in the essentials, unity, in the non-essentials, liberty. But in all things, charity, and uh, that's that was my that was my operative motive in ten years working in the chapel. Now we didn't just have the Christian, and within the Christian church there, there was people from all different denominations. So it was a real mixture there, and you had to learn to be agree to disagree agreeably and continue forward serving the Lord together. And but we didn't just have that. You had the Muslims meeting over here. You had the Rastafaris over here. You had the Odinists over here. You had Mormons. You had Jehovah Witness. You had Satanists. You had Wiccans. You had, I mean, it was all going down right there at the same time. And uh, brother, you, you, had to, you had to learn to show, to show some folks some grace and respect and still live with them. Yeah. Yep, I hear you. One of the questions is, um, someone asking about uh, the law and are we still under the Torah or the law? And the answer is no. And uh, people who think we're still under the law, they must not read their Bible. Amen. Because the Bible says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. That's what right. What part of you are not under the law do they not understand? Yeah. And we're yeah. under grace. The Bible says the law came by Moses, but mercy and or, but grace and truth with Jesus Christ. Amen. And um, you read uh, Galatians chapter 4. I forget what it is. Let me look it up real quick. Um, Galatians 5.18 says, in Galatians 5.18, we read these words. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. When we're saved, we get the Holy Spirit. And um, another is Romans chapter 10. We saw this earlier, 10 and verse 4. 
for Christ is the end of the law yeah. for righteousness. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there's the verse that says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances which are against us. Uh, the right. Bible says the law is a curse. We're not under a curse today, so how could we be under the law? To get back under the law, that's a curse. But there are people under there are out there that say we are still under the law. Well, then you're saying that we must keep the law to get to heaven, and you have set up a works gospel, and yeah. you're wrong. Yeah. For as many as are under the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. The law is not of faith. So if we're saved by faith, then we're not under the law because the law is not of faith. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. And it continues on there. And it just read Galatians and, you know, um, Galatians 2. 16 how could anyone think that we're still under the old testament law that's ridiculous right. brother breaker the 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 law was added because of transgression until the seed should come so the law was a temporary covenant to hold the abrahamic promise in place until christ came and then then that that was a school teacher to bring us to christ and after christ, after after faith has come we are no longer under the school teacher Amen. Amen. And you've got Galatians 2, 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Amen. And yet there are people out there that are thinking, I'm justifying myself so I can get to heaven because I'm keeping the law. And the Bible says, no, no. So it says it right here. But before faith came. Mm hmm. We were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith is is come, we are no longer under what the schoolmaster. Master, what, what is the schoolmaster? The schoolmaster is, is the law. That's right. So we're no longer under the law. You're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So it's faith that saves us. Again, not works. Yeah. So, Second Corinthians. Say Corinthians says that which is that which is a done away, that which is done away, that which is abolished, that which was nailed to the cross. Scripture couldn't be any clearer about it. And that's all in Paul's epistles. Yeah. And yeah. that takes me back to the greatest verses, I think, that that prove this is Acts 13, 38, and 30. Uh, yeah, 38 and 39. And this is what one of the things that God revealed to Paul. And those who are leaving Paul out are leaving this out. And you can't do it. You can't leave out Paul because no. this is what's given to Paul. This is what Paul tells us. For all these people out there that think we're still under the law. <laughs> look at verse 38 and 39. Paul says, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Not the law that gives forgiveness of sins anymore. It's Jesus. And by him, all that what? Believe? That's right. Are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So the Amen. message of Paul is justified by faith. Amen. The message that changed the world twice. Paul's day, and then Martin Luther got a hold of that. And he was like, oh, you know what? I think the Catholics were wrong. <laughs> so yeah. It's kind of sad that people don't see this truth, but it's in the Bible. So great question and i hope people see that my heart bleeds for these seventh day adventists because they still try to get us under the law yeah it's so sad yeah. someone's asking about todd adkins study have you ever heard of a todd adkins no nope. all right well then that answered that question sorry about that <laughs> sorry <laughs> some people we hear about some people we don't and again i don't really like talking about people i'd rather deal with the the um issue or the uh, um yeah. Yeah. matter so if he's the, the certain yeah. doctrine that he's talking about give us the doctrine we'll talk about that amen so well that's about it if you had any more questions quickly uh, put them up there but um the main things that we deal with all the time is that one are we still under the law and then the one um uh, once saved always saved a lot of people don't believe in once saved always saved well that's something that's revealed to paul amen and we, read, we yep. read it earlier yep. sealed with the yep. Holy Spirit. Three times in the Bible, Paul tells us yep. we're sealed. And uh, I don't see how people think you can lose your salvation. 
if it was the law and if it was works, then yeah, you could lose it because, oh, I sinned, now I just lost it. But it's not. It's we're justified by faith alone through through the blood alone, through Christ alone. And so That's it's right. not whether we sin or not that gets us to heaven. We're already forgiven. Amen. It's whether or not we get rewards based upon whether we sin or not. Yeah. yeah. And people who don't understand once saved, always saved, they have problems. Well, they, they, they're they not they're not studying their Bible dispensationally. If you are not recognizing the dispensation, that's a Bible word, which uh, Paul uses several times. Uh, if you do not understand this, the dispensational nature of progressive revelation in the scripture, you're going to take everything from everywhere and squish it all together. And you're just going to end up with mush. Yep. Like a mushy banana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, look, look. Context determines content, and a text without a context is a pretext. And pretext means excuse, and it's excuse to believe what you want to believe. Yep. Amen. A lot of these sayings he's saying are things Ruckman said. Right? Amen. A lot of these kind of sayings, which were a blessing, but it's true. It's true. Question here is about the difference between day of Christ and the day of the Lord. That's a good one. Yeah. Can you explain yeah. that briefly? I'm sure you well, know that one. There's a lot, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of views on this. And there are good brethren that see it different ways. And uh, um the way I say is that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord can include both the rapture, the advent, the tribulation, and in the broader sense, as that final seventh day of the Lord even the millennium. So I think that the context uh, determines exactly what is being spoken of uh, when, we, when we deal with it, any of these terms, uh, day of Christ, day of the Lord. That's my, that's, that's my take on it. Okay. Well, in Bible school, Ruckman showed us that many times in the Old Testament, when it says day of the Lord, it's always a day of gloom and a day of destruction. And they, yep. so that yep. ties in more with Armageddon. Now, I can, like you said, go a little past that. Yep. But the day of Christ would be the day that he gets his bride. So the day of Christ, 2 Thessalonians 2, sounds like it's a rapture. Now, can it be after that also and include the marriage supper of the Lamb and other things? Uh, well, probably. But we're, we're not looking for the day of the Lord. We're looking for the day of Christ. Amen. Hey. We're looking for the rapture first and then Armageddon later. We come back with him. And new versions of the Bible, they change that in Second yeah. Thessalonians yeah. chapter 2. So they change day of Christ to day of the Lord. So now there's no rapture. You're waiting for Jesus to come back in Armageddon. So that means you go through the tribulation. That's why we are King James only. We don't want Bibles that change doctrine. Amen. No, absolutely and not. Absolutely not. not. They certainly do change doctrine, and it's yeah. sad. It's sad. So, Brother Roy and Brother Breaker, how do we handle those who don't understand dispensational salvation? Well, um, my my thought on for years we've talked about dispensational salvation because in every dispensation God told them a different way. Yes. But really, when did people get saved? The Bible says Jesus is the author of eternal salvation. So, yes. the Old Testament, you went down to Abraham's bosom. You didn't go to heaven. Yeah. Yep. So really, were they saved in the Old Testament? Well, they were safe in Abraham's bosom. Right. That was through different things. For one guy, it was build a boat. For another guy, yeah. it was do something else. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the things we deal with a lot, and we were blessed to have been taught dispensations because they're in the Bible, yeah. is that there are dispensations. And you need to see dispensations. And I found in my ministry, the greatest thing to teach is dispensations because yeah. that helps people understand the Bible. Yeah. And I've been to several churches where the pastor says, don't teach dispensations, that'll confuse people. No. And I'm just flabbergasted. So you don't want them to know their Bible? Every time I preach on dispensations, I get, Brother Breaker, thank you, you've opened the Bible to me, now I understand it. Don't ever run from dispensations. So how do we deal, how do I deal with people that are anti-dispensational? I try to have grace on them, but right. I also try to show them so that they'll fall in love with the Bible. Amen. Because you can't understand that book without dispensation. Yeah. Now, Brother Ray, you, uh, Roy, sorry, Brother Ray, Brother Roy, why don't you tell us how do you deal with well, those? I, uh, I like to explain it like the Bible is like a huge puzzle. And without understanding dispensationalism, you 
cannot find a place for every piece. Because <laughs> look, you you go you go over there in Ezekiel, and it tells you the righteous man turn turns from his righteousness. Uh, uh, all the his righteousness that he's done is going to be forgotten, and he's going to die in his sin. Now, how do how do you line that up with with Paul Paul teaching uh, uh, eternal security? You can't. You can't unless unless you recognize that things were done differently here than they're being done here. And you you're going to you're going to get a mess without understanding dispensationalism. You're not going to find a place for every for every piece of that puzzle. But when you do identify that, then you'll find every single piece. Oh, this one. Oh, it goes here. Oh, this one goes here. And it, and you will have no pieces left and you will have a perfect picture. And this is the scripture. Amen. That's exactly right. Because God dealt with different people in different ways. Yeah. And uh, we, we talked earlier about the new IFB, the new Independent Fundamental Baptist out in Arizona and what they started. And they have made a video in which it's against dispensations. I don't know if you ever saw that. I forget. They made one called Marching to Zion or something. And they're yeah. very much against the Jews. And They're anti-Semitic. Yeah, that's a mess. But but when they made their video against this, well, they made another video. I can't remember what it was. And then I told my wife, if they're going that way, they're going to make a video someday against dispensations. And sure enough, they made their um, documentary yeah. on why there's no dispensations. And they, they repeat that lie that dispensations only showed up with Darby. That is not true. No, 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 no. Before Darby. And that yeah. book, Dispensationalism Before Darby, shows you they taught dispensations 1700s and way back. Right, right. Um, I got a phone call from someone on that documentary and they said, we want to have you in that video and you defend dispensations. I said, no, I don't want to go in your video. Well, they put me in there anywhere. Anyway, I'm in the documentary. And um, I said, turn to your Bible. Let me show you dispensations. And the guy hung up on me. <laughs> so that's <laughs> what they care about truth is no. they don't even want to hear it. So let me share that verse with you um, that, uh, that they told that, that I tried to share because to me, this is one of the best verses in the Bible to prove dispensations. And uh, it's it's like, how do you miss it? I mean, first of all, the word dispensation shows up four times in the Bible. But uh, let me show you this. It's in Hebrews, I believe, chapter one. And dispensations are God in different times dealing with different people. It's That's that right. simple. That's so right. Hebrews one, one, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners. Sundry is different. Diverse is different. And so in different times and different manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he hath appointed. So you got back then he dealt with them in one way, different ways, so more than one, and now he's dealing with us through his son. Is that not dispensations right there in two verses? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, how do people miss that? Now I want to say, is it first Peter? Um, what you were that when you were talking when you were talking about the law, uh, you brought out a perfect. It says, it says now before faith has come, you were shut up on. Okay, well that's showing you something changed right there. Exactly. <laughs> First Peter chapter one verse ten, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. So the law was back then and grace oh. is then. That's a different dispensation. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So they're teaching of something that's coming now. But look at verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed and not unto themselves. So they're writing parts of the Bible down that was not for them, not their dispensation. It's for us later. That's called prophecy. Yeah. But unto us. They did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So you can't read the Bible without seeing dispensations. And the word dispensation appears four times in the Bible. And it's it's nuts. I mean, it's it's utterly nutty that people yeah. would run around and claim to be Bible believers and be against the most basic teaching in the Bible, that of dispensation. Yeah, yeah. it's so First clear. First Corinthians 9, 17. Ephesians 1 10. Ephesians 3 2. Amen. 1 25. And dispensing, to dispense something is to give it out. So God yep. gave different things to different people in different times. Yep. That's a different dispensation. So we 
are now in the dispensation of the grace of God. We're Amen. saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen, amen. Well, we've been going here almost two hours, so let me see a couple more questions. If you have just questions for Brother Roy, just ask me those real quick, and then we'll have to. Oh, oh Brother that. Baker, uh, yes, I uh, I told my pastor that I would request prayer um, uh, out here in Las Vegas, Bible Baptist Church. Um, you know, there's there's not much here in Sin City. You've been out here. You've preached on the street with our church before, Brother Breaker. And yeah. uh, it's there. Th this there's not much out here. I just came from down in the Bible Belt and there was a lot of good churches, a lot of good works down there. It's, things are pretty dry out here. There's only a couple. There's only a couple little churches still standing by the stuff here. And ours is one of them. And it's been here for going on 50 years. But uh, um its foundation, the building is falling apart and uh, it's, it's, it's sinking into the ground and it's got to be tore down and, and, and rebuilt. And so I ask everybody everywhere to pray for Bible Baptist church in Las Vegas is the last bastion of, 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 uh, of, of Bible, of Bible dispensational Bible believing King James Bible Baptist church uh, that's left out here. And, and it's, and it's, and it's crumbling around us. So uh, everybody, please be in in uh, uh, in prayer for for us, us getting a new building. Amen, amen. It's all about the foundation. That's a good spiritual amen. lesson, here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Is your foundation right? Otherwise, everything will crumble. We'll yeah. pray for them. Also, pray for Brother Johnson because he's the one that was going out doing the street preaching. Yes, sir. You can still go on my channel and see when I was out there preaching. I noticed you put it on your channel as well, Brother Roy. Yes, when sir. You're the street out there. But pray for Brother Johnson. He's got some health problems as well. And he's got uh, he's got cancer, and uh, he needs a miracle. So keep him in prayer, if you would. Um, we we all need prayer. But uh, pray for that ministry, Sin City, man. Uh, I've been out there several times. I remember the first time I preached in a church, and I don't even remember what church it was. There was three or four of them out there in the '90s, and one of them they put me up in a hotel that was a casino. I just yeah. felt so weird staying in a hotel and you go through the lobby, ding, 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 all this. Yeah. So yeah. Weird. But the food was good. I, I know that. that was Amen. Amen. Good. But boy, you could go broke living out there. And a lot of people do. Yeah. But, uh, how sad. Um, so I'm not seeing any more. So go ahead and give us a one or two more questions before we cut this off. Was there anything else that you wanted to say, Brother Roy? Uh, no, brother. I just again, I wanted to thank uh, brother Robert Breaker for having having me on, uh, and you know, like I said, keeping it penitentiary real. Uh, you know, it, I, I this got, can't hurt my ministry at all in my YouTube channel. Getting it, some exposure here with brother Breaker, and uh, like I said, I I I love his spirit and his attitude um, about the Bible, and you know, we keeping it in a spirit of grace and like I, I like that he doesn't call out names and and you know man we're all so close we're all we all just believe 99 something percent the same thing let let's concentrate as king james dispensational bible believers let us concentrate on what we have in common not that one little silly thing over here the semantical word misunderstanding we might have let's not get off track on that stuff focus on that but let's if we man in these last and evil days we could we could really have an impact for the gospel and do a work for the lord if we would just if we would come together and focus on that amen that's that's a great i mean you said that before we got started is how important it would be if we could just all get together yeah. not argue not fuss not all that stuff and uh, so many today, it seems like all they want to do is argue. So it's so sad. Well, I'm not seeing much more here. Um, uh, one person asked, though, uh, why pre-trib rapture? Why don't you explain that? Because I've I've explained it a lot, but I, sometimes other people can explain well, it better than me. So tell people why pre-trib only. This is uh, um, th this this is the deal right here. And I, this is one thing that got, I kind of got good at in prison 
was preaching to a room full of convicts. You can't really take them to Bible school and get too theological. You're going to lose them. So I, I like breaking things down real simple. Okay. God's dealing with the nation of Israel. All right. And, and that's throughout all the Old Testament. And we get to the New Testament. Jesus is talking about that kingdom is coming. And that kingdom, what comes with that kingdom is a resurrection, a new birth of the nation of Israel. And that's what he's talking about over there in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke 20 and 21 and, uh, uh, and, and Mark 14, I believe. He's talking about that he's going to send his angels and he's going to gather his elect, but he's gathering them to Jerusalem. It's a resurrection of the nation of Israel. All that's going to happen later on through the Apostle Paul is a mystery, all right? It's the... Uh, all that happened before concerning Israel, that those all prophetic events. That was prophecy. Prophecy is what has been revealed. Mystery is something that's not yet been revealed. So the apostle Paul comes and he reveals the mystery of the church, the body of Christ, body of Christ, the gospel of the grace of God. This is all brand new stuff. This ain't any old testament. This is new stuff that the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus has been teaching through Paul. So it all concerns the body of Christ. Then you get over there in Thessalonians and you find out, and you get in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you find out that the body of Christ is getting taken out of here, right? The body of Christ is going. So now when you understand that what was said over there by Jesus was referring to the resurrection of Israel and the gathering of that nation, you won't confuse it with what Paul says in Thessalonians about the bride getting caught away. Now, before the church age can end, well, the church has got to go, okay? And then what happens? Then God goes back to dealing with the nation of Israel, right? So the church age is from resurrection to rapture, and then you got the tribulation where it's all going back to be about Israel. So it, it just there's no way the church can be here because the church age is over. That dispensation is done. We're gone. We're up in heaven, and God turns again and begins to fulfill all those promises that he made to the nation of Israel concerning their, when he comes back, their resurrection, their brought, being brought into the land. The seed of David, the son of David, sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, the, the Israel ruling and reigning over the world, all that stuff, man, That's that. those, those are not promises he's going to take back. Those are not promises. All that will be fulfilled. But you've got to rightly divide what was for the body of Christ and what was for the nation of Israel. And if you do that, all them little puzzle pieces will fit perfectly. And you'll go, oh, okay. We're talking about two different things. Pre-tribulation rapture. Absolutely. The church is gone. God goes back to dealing with Israel. Amen. Amen. Exactly right. And the church is the bride of Christ. And I don't think that God's going to let his bride be abused by the Antichrist. Right? Amen. Amen. Uh, You're out of, we're out of here. What kind of husband says, hey, you know, I love you. I want to marry you, but I'm going to pass you off to this guy for a couple of years, three and a half years, and then then I'll come get you. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Somebody else asked, and you probably dealt with a lot of these. Before I got saved, I was a Pentecostal. And I was just as nutty as a fruitcake. I didn't have any doctrine. Someone okay. asked about Pentecostals. Tell us what Pentecostals are, where they're wrong, and what you, what you hey. how you deal with Pentecostals. Again, again, if a person will just understand the difference between Israel and the church, understand dispensationalism, the whole question goes away, all right? Signs and wonders were given to the nation of Israel. God has always dealt with the nation of Israel with signs and wonders, okay? Started back there with Moses, with the throwing down the rod and the, the leprous hand and, and all that. God has always dealt with Israel. The Jews require a sign, all right? So now, God is coming to the end of dealing with Israel. It's what Paul talks about, the fall of Israel. When they dust off his sandals, and now God's done dealing with Israel, and he goes to the Gentiles, all right? So when God is done dealing with the nation of Israel, guess what's over with? Signs and wonders, all right? That's the speaking in tongues. That's the, that's the miraculous healing. Look, God still heals. God could still heal, but he doesn't do it through a person that has a special gift, all right? If he was doing that, as I say all the time, if that was still in effect, 
Uh, what is that person doing wherever he's at? Why isn't he at Shriners Hospital for Children or St. Jude's Children Hospital going up and down those the, those hallways and touching them kids and getting them up out of bed? Because that is no longer in effect. Why? Because that was evidence of the messiahship for the nation of Israel coming into their kingdom. It is not part of the church age gospel of grace. What are we saved by? By grace through what? Faith. What is faith? Faith what you don't see. See, that's all the signs and wonders. That's not faith. You see that. See, but we say, but we don't see. That's why Paul talks about whether it be where the be tongues, they're going to cease. It's going to pass away. It's gonna, all that passes away. With what? With the fall of Israel. You see all that stuff over there in, in 1 Corinthians talking about the exercising of the, of the gifts. Think about when that was. That was while God was still dealing with the nation of Israel. And Corinth was a very, very Jewish church there. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the, 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 the leader of the synagogue got saved. And uh, Paul stayed with somebody whose house was right up next to the synagogue. Uh, this, this was a very Jewish church. The signs, the Jewish signs were very active and being abused in the Corinthian church. But see, once that, that's, that's when that letter is written, the, the signs and wonders are still active. But they're getting ready to pass because what happens? Seven years after First Corinthians is written, Titus of Rome marches his legion, legions down <laughs> and smashes out Jerusalem, and 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 that's it. God has God has put Israel on the shelf. God is done dealing with the nation of Israel for the for the time of the church. Again, all these little pieces of the puzzle. You got to put them where they go. You can't you can't take those pieces that were for Israel and back then and and stick them over here. They don't fit. So when you rightly divide it, it all, all that the Pentecostal signs and wonders stuff, uh, you'll you'll quite clearly see that God tells you what that was for and when it ceased. Amen. So what you have is many of the Pentecostals are in the wrong dispensation. Exactly. Exactly. The Bible yeah. says we live by faith and not by sight. And all the Pentecostals want to do is live by sight. Right. They want right. to believe it because they saw a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. miracles are for the Jews. We don't need miracles. And right. the next thing that happens is the devil shows up working miracles. Mm -hmm. I'm very leery of people claiming to have miracles. The first question I have is who is doing that? Yeah. Well, they would say Jesus. I would say, no, it might be the spirit of devils working miracles, the Bible yeah. says. Yeah. Yep. Well, now, then they say, well, you just lost your salvation because that's the sin of blasphemy. <laughs> so they they love to, to put you down and attack you and say you're not saved and all this stuff. But yeah. do they have the true gospel? Theirs is a gospel of you can get saved. Now you can lose it. If you think you can lose it, did you ever have it? Because you're not believing once saved, always saved. You're not believing eternal life through faith. You're believing I can receive something and then lose something. Yeah. Then it's not eternal. And yeah. Jesus yeah. said salvation is eternal life. So I look at Pentecostals and I see a lot of lost people. And it's yeah. baffling to me how even an, a King James Bible believing independent Baptist could say that Pentecostals are saved. Yeah. Because many Pentecostals have a works-based gospel. They think it's faith right. and it works. That's not a saved person. Yeah. But you can be a Pentecostal, but I would think the Holy Spirit would lead you out. Yeah. Because you'd yeah. see through a lot of that. Yeah. Because uh, I was lost in that, and it, it it bothered me because they claimed you could be healed. And so you want to be healed, and then you're not healed, and then they say, well, you just don't have enough faith. <laughs> in the Bible, Jesus did miracles in a place, even though they had no faith. Right. I mean, it's just right. so sad that they always try to make an excuse for why it doesn't work. Yeah. And they never could think, well, maybe it's not working because it's a different dispensation. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 based on uh, feelings, emotions and experiences. It's not based yeah. on the word of God. Right. And I always say we have to go by facts and not feeling. We have That's to go right. by evidence and not our emotion. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes. Well, a lot of people aren't having any questions. So we Amen. Can this up. is there anything else you want to say or anything you want to talk about? We'll go ahead and close. Okay, we can we can we can close, brother. Again, thank you so much, and uh, uh, it's been a it's been a real blessing. Well, amen. Well, I like brother Roy because he's on the level, and uh, he's headed the right direction. And I wanted everyone on my channel to see there's others out there that believe like I do. I'm not some sort of weirdo. 
That's right. But uh, any group, you're going to find good and bad. And yeah. so we're ordained. Well, I don't know. Are you ordained, brother? Uh, no, uh, uh, no, I, I, you know, I've only been out of prison a year and a half. And, and my pastor, um, you know, they prayed me out officially as a, a missionary evangelist. And that was like my, it was my first, that was like my, my uh, uh, test run. And it was, it was great when I, when I got to meet you and he, and my pastor did say, when you get back, then we'll, we'll start thinking about formal or, ordination and making you up some prayer cards and, and stuff like that. So that's all in, that's all it's still going, but it's bad, brother. It's only been a year and a half. <laughs> right. Right. Well, pray for brother Roy. Like he told you, he's on, I don't know what to call it. Perpetual probation. Is that what, yeah, what is it? Exactly? Life, lifetime, lifetime parole. Lifetime parole, but yeah. your parole officer gave you a month to come and preach down here. Yes, sir. And uh, as long as you checked in every so often. So yes, it's sir. possible he can do that more. And uh, so Amen. if you're, if Amen. you're an independent, fundamental King James Bible believing pastor and you would like Brother Roy to come preach for you, contact him and see Amen. if, because it took him a while to set up all the meetings. Yes, and sir. Maybe he could set up some more meetings and you can. Amen. Have Thank you. Through. Thank you. Yes, Amen. I'm available. <laughs> he's very available he's been locked up for so long he can't wait to go <laughs> that's right but uh, we all reap what we sow but uh god used this for brother roy as a time to study the bible yes and yes, uh, what a blessing it didn't just come in here it went down here that's right and i can see that in you brother roy and that's why i like you and so you better keep it up you better keep preaching and teaching and um, pointing people the right way in that spirit of of unity not to compromise to unite. That's right. That's right. We, we stand on the line. We don't fall off on either side in extremism. Amen. We come together in the truth. That's what we want to do. Amen. Well, so uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope everyone else did too. I felt like we didn't have a lot tonight and we didn't get as many questions, but at least we got some. So I appreciate everybody in the chat. Uh, Amen. I didn't see very many, I, but I don't have time to read them all. Um, but well, okay, we got to do this one too. There's one quick more question, Brother Roy. Okay, right there behind you on the shelf is that book, The Other Side of Calvinism. And so, yes. can you explain what's wrong with Calvinism? That would okay. be a great, a great way to go okay. out. If you could, explain okay, it. very good. Yeah, um, well, first of all, uh, um, let's just let's just let's just whack out that tulip real quick, amen. Uh, the acrostic T U L I P tulip. All right, these are the five points of Calvinism. Uh, uh, total depravity. Well, they say total depravity, but what they don't mean total depravity, they mean ultimate depravity. They mean that you are totally unable to do anything good. Uh, and that 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 is just crazy. And the, in the Old Testaments, they weren't born again, and they were able to bring their offering and try to keep the law. And I'm, I mean, I heard a man say even Hitler probably loved his mother. Uh, but so that that total depravity, you know, you're, you're not unable to recognize you're lost and, and, and see Christ. That, that's ridiculous. Uh, un unconditional election. That is that for God's own purpose and reason, unexplained, he, he, he elected the, this group of people over here to get saved. And, uh, uh, and, and no matter what, these guys are going to get saved and everybody else isn't. Uh, uh, limited atonement. Well, therefore, if they're the only ones that were ever going to get saved, then Christ didn't die for the whole world and everybody. He only died for these few folks over here that he just picked out this little special crew. So limited atonement, that, 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 that's not true because we know that uh, uh, that God wants everyone to come to repentance. Everyone, he he died for the whole world. So total depravity is 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 junk. Unconditional election is junk. Limited is they told me this wrong and irresistible grace that's what brother breaker was talking about earlier where they say the holy spirit comes in and born again you first and then you hear the gospel and believe on christ and we looked over there in ephesians and we said no you hear the word you trust and believe then you're sealed by the holy spirit of promise so you absolutely can hear the gospel and and resist it so irresistible grace is not true and p uh uh with the perseverance of the saints listen you don't have to persevere it's preservation of the saints when you were sealed by the holy spirit of god you were preserved and seated in heavenly places in christ jesus that was a done 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 deal so all five points of calvinism a man-made religious uh, formula not biblical amen all right we got to do this we've we've gone through from uh pentecostals to seventh day adventists to calvinist now what's wrong with the catholic church can you do that one for me, Brother Roy? Well, uh, you know, we know that we know what the Catholic Church is. Uh, uh, Catholic Church was the marriage of uh, ba the Babylonian worship system uh, with with 
with Christianity. It was an intermingling that happened in Rome, and so uh, uh, that's 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 what that's what happened. So we basically uh, uh, the uh, Semiramis, uh, 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 Ashtaroth, or uh, whatever, uh, uh, they just became Mary, and you know it, it, they took all the pagan feasts and and. and change the names on them and what you got is just a, a bunch of pagan dark black magic voodoo hocus pocus i'm gonna say a spell over this biscuit and wine and that's gonna uh turn into the body of christ and you're gonna receive jesus through your through your mouth and uh, uh and you pray to saints and pray to mary just like you pray to all the false gods they, they're just false gods and they slap the uh, saints names on them uh it it's just it, it just it's just a mess it, it, it's uh it's it is the horror Babylon. I recommend anybody that really wants to uh, understand that get get Alexander Hislop's work, The Two Babylons, and it'll take you and trace that whole thing out. Now, is there some is there some truth in there? Well, it, you you look at the Council of Nicaea, and they had a pretty good definition of the Trinity, and uh, um, they, you know they 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 do recognize the deity of Christ and the Trinity. So it's you know it's not a hundred percent all wrong. But it's like uh, uh, the Catholic monk uh, came to Martin Luther and he said, uh, hey, where was your religion before the Reformation? And Luther told him the same place your face was before you washed it under all the dirt. So somewhere down deep in there, you can find actually find the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But, man, they pile so much so much false doctrine over it. <laughs> Boy, you better you better have a construction crew to, to, to find the truth in, in Catholic doctrine. Amen. So I see Catholicism as a mixture of paganism with Christianity. I also see it as a mixture of Gnosticism with Christianity. Amen. Amen. And I also see it mixing the state with Christianity. Yeah. These yeah. are three things that do not mix with Christianity. So it's yeah. a false Christianity because they've mixed in things that shouldn't mix with yeah. Christ. And Amen. they put a man above Jesus. They they put a pope in. Um, they they have so many different doctrines that are that are not correct according to the Bible. I can't tell you how many testimonies I've gotten over the years of people that say I was a Catholic and then I watched your videos and I read my Bible and you're right. The Bible says one thing. Catholicism says something completely That's different. That's right. That's right. And where do we go to? We go to the Bible. Amen. Uh, we're not going to attack you if you're a Catholic, but you do need to study what the Bible says about your church. That's right. That's because right. Catholicism is tradition. And Jesus said tradition makes the word of God of none effect. Yep. So when you follow tradition rather than the Bible, you have fallen off the line and you've gone the wrong way. And uh, it's just really sad. Someone says, hey, now do Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> What's wrong with Jehovah Witnesses? Well, uh, you know, the, the Jehovah Witness, of course, we understand uh, uh, is there's nothing new under the sun. And this is just this is just rebaked Arianism. And uh, uh, that, that was a, that was an early heresy in, in the church. Uh, Charles Taze Russell started the uh, uh, Watchtower Bible and Track Society, and uh, you know it, it's it's just another Judaizing uh, cult. It, it's got, uh, trying to apply a bunch of Old Testament stuff uh, to to the New Testament, and of course they deny the Trinity, they deny the deity of Christ, they sa deny salvation by grace through faith. And they just add a bunch of legalistic Jewish works and a man-made religious system. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just it's just an, another non-Christian cult. Yeah. And your Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in the doctrine of the Godhead or the Trinity, which is right. one God in three, but these three are one. And uh, much of what they believe is, is again, tradition. Yeah. If you're a Jehovah Witness, you read their monthly watchtower more than you read the bible yeah if you read the bible you wouldn't believe what they teach because there's That's so right. many things that are yep. so different from yep. the bible and uh jehovah witnesses really don't understand and they don't believe in the doctrine of eternal hell yeah so they believe when you die it's over that's annihilation they believe yeah so so if that was true brother roy why don't i go and rob a bank ah uh, yeah <laughs> i'll show you how <laughs> yeah, no, because no, no. If, that, if that's true, what do I have to give account to God for? I don't. I find I find the people that are so the most busy trying to air condition hell are the ones that are probably going there. 
exactly. So you've got to watch out for your Jehovah windbags. I'm sorry, I said that one. <laughs> Jehovah witnesses. Yeah, uh, because they don't offer anything. They don't offer eternal life in heaven, eternal no. salvation. No. They only run around and tell you about the kingdom gospel. And yeah. they say, yeah. hey, if you follow us, well, when you just might, if God comes back, be part of the kingdom. Yeah. But if yeah. you die before that, you get nothing. <laughs> so, uh, no, I believe in eternal salvation. I believe in heaven and hell. And I believe that's one of two places where you're going. And I believe God is one in three. And the one in the middle died for me. So, Amen. That's Brother Baker. It, 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 you know, we're getting to close here, and it, and I know you notice it too. The the one common theme in all of these questions, in all of these groups, in all of these errors, is a failure to rightly divide the word of truth and apply context and understand dispensational theology. Clears up every single one of these errors that we talked about. Amen. Amen. And how sad that person can claim to be a King James Bible believer and still fall into error. Yeah. Because yeah. there's some people on YouTube that claim to be King James only, and they're attacking the doctrine of the Trinity now and saying, I saw that. I saw if that. you believe the Trinity, then you're, then you're a Catholic. So in their eyes, we're all Jesuits. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say publicly, I'm not a Jesuit. And Amen. Um, sad that someone could think that. That's so or a Freemason. <laughs> yeah. Someone has been asking over and over, and I don't have an answer. And I'm I'm pretty sure you don't either, because I have no idea what this is. What do you think of the evangelical free church denomination? I've never heard of evangelical free church. Have you? Yeah, I I, I have heard the term before, but I'm not exactly sure what it means. So I don't either. And yeah. someone says, "What denomination are you?" Well, I like to call myself a King James Bible believer. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm an ordained independent Baptist. So. Um, oh, I got I got one for that. I did a video on it. This is this is a little uh, uh this is a little thing I put together because they're all kind of Baptists, right? So I did a video calling Brother Roy. What kind of Baptist are you? Well, I'm an independent, fundamental, rightly divided, premillennial, once saved, always saved by grace. Every single word, King James only Bible believing Baptist. That's what mm -hmm. kind of Baptist I am. <laughs> Amen. Hey, man, don't forget to add blood bot. That'd be a good blood one. To put in I'm going to add that in there. Yeah, thank okay. you, Brother Breaker. Hey, man. Nothing but the blood. Hey, Amen. That's right. That's right. Someone asked about the Nazarene church. We don't have to get into that, but that's the church that teaches works for salvation. You must yes, be very yes, careful. Uh, people I met that in Nazarene church, they, they think it's all about your works to get you to yeah, have it. Yeah. So sad. Yeah. Um, so, so many questions all of a sudden, but uh, we're going to have to get <laughs> off of here here in a minute. Um, well, everybody, I just want to introduce you to Roy because I like his spirit. I like how he he knows his stuff because he's had plenty of time in jail to study. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think Amen. about the Apostle Paul. He went to jail, too. And uh, just something about that. I, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> <Amen>. but, <laughs> but, uh, if you do, um, it can either make you better or make you worse. Yeah. And it's Roy true. is a testimony of how the Lord used that for the better in it's order true. to learn the word and be able to teach the word and uh, get that out to people. So uh, I like Brother Roy, and he's got his videos he's doing as well, and uh, he's putting out pretty good doctrine. So keep him in prayer. Hopefully we'll see him again soon. Uh, someone says smash the like button. I hardly ever say smash the like button, but I guess, I don't know, does it do anything for you? I mean, do you get anything for a like button? I don't know. But um, I think we'll call it quits there. We've gone over two hours, and uh, we answered a lot of questions, but is there anything you would say to my viewers? Um, I think the, the main point is what I try to put across is rightly dividing. That's right. And it's one thing to be an independent Baptist and people, you know, my, my group is independent Baptist, but you could be an independent Baptist and not be a rightly dividing, not believe in dispensations. Yeah. And that's sad. I think all the independent Baptists should believe in dispensations. Amen. So I think our basis of fellowship is more because we're dispensational than anything else because yeah. we believe in dispensations. And uh, my viewers, when I see them in person and they see me, Brother Breaker, man, I love that you rightly divide. <laughs> that's the main thing that I hear. And that's so important that we rightly divide the word of truth. So I want to make sure I keep doing that. Amen. Amen, brother. That's hey, that's why I sought you out, man, because because, uh, you know, we say we right there, man. We uh, we 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 rightly divide this book. And uh, uh, that, that's the only way that anybody is ever going to know the Bible is to rightly divide it. And but once you start rightly divide it, 
it gets exciting. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And it just, man, you just fall in love with this book once you start putting the pieces together right. Well, we'll close with this. I, mean, I keep saying we'll close, but this is so much fun and exciting. Do you think the rapture's close? What do you think? What do you think about what you're seeing in the world and how it's all coming together? What do you well, have on that? I, I look at the uh, in first and second Timothy where he talks about, you know, in the last days and in the latter time. And these are church age epistles. So I think he's clearly talking about in the latter days and the latter time of the church age. And so, yeah, we, you know, we see, we are seeing all these things come to pass. Uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's quite clear that we are in the latter days and the latter time of the church age and that he is soon to come. And if you're going to ever do anything for Jesus Christ, uh, I think you better get busy now. Amen. Amen. So time is short. And what should we do? We should preach the gospel. First Corinthians 15, one through four. Yes, sir. Turn to faith in the blood, Romans 3, 25. And that's what I've been trying to do. And um, I'm sticking with the stuff. That's and right. I, it's, it's hard to find others that believe it true. So when I do, I, I get excited. So pray for uh, us, everybody. And uh, hopefully next week, I'll have another man named John Dis Dislin or Dislin. I forget how you say his last name. We'll ask him in person. Um, I think we're going to just go to a park and interview one another at a park. And he's put out a book called Nehemiah Strong that has a lot of good information in it. And uh, God has brought a lot of people along my path. And so I want to introduce you to them. And uh, like I said, it's hard to find good ones, though. <laughs> it's hard to. But when we do, I like to stick together. So maybe I'll have Fabriel on one day, too, Brother Roy. Hey, man, he's a blessing. He is. I hope he'll come on. Uh, he's he's a little shy. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think he's shy at all. <laughs> but I'd sure love to have him on as well. Um, so keep us in prayer, everyone. Um, I wanted to do another sermon this week in front of the whiteboard, but with everything that's going on this week, I might have to just go out in the woods and do a sermon. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. But, um, huh, well, I guess we'll close there. And again, Brother Roy, thank you for coming on. And yes, tell everybody sir. again where to find you one more time. Okay. Uh, I'm a, a Roy Bell on Facebook, but uh, my YouTube channel is Old School Bible Baptist. And and we're we're at, ever in Las near Las Vegas. Uh, we're Bible Baptist Church uh, in in Las in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, and you go out and street on preach on the street on Fremont Street when Thursday nights. Thursday nights at, at six o'clock or what time? Yeah, we we hit the street about seven. We're usually there from about seven till ten, and we're at the corner of Fremont and Casino Center Boulevard. Okay, and so if you're a born-again Christian and King James Bible believer and uh, you would like to go out there, I mean, just don't be a weirdo. <laughs> we don't want any weirdos, but Amen. maybe you don't want to preach on the street. Well, you can still hand out tracts, and that yeah. would be a great thing. And there's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of video of that on my YouTube channel. Right, you, and you, I, I was out there a year or yep. two ago, and I just I didn't hold the microphone close enough, and I preached my throat out too fast. But um, amen. Well, I guess we'll close there. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. It's been a blessing. Thank you for your questions and the comments. And uh, I'll try to start doing more of these uh, live streams. But, boy, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but Amen. it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So Amen. thank you, Brother Roy. And uh, bye, everybody. Take care. God bless. Okay. All right. I think.